I'm thinking back on all those times When I feel close to from All that I could become Eager but too scared to climb Wanted to please my friends But it felt like the end of myself Good day everyone and welcome to Mommy Guide Inc. For those who are new to my channel, I am Mommy Lala. We would love to engage with you all, so please feel free to put your comments, questions, or suggestions at any time here uh, on the chat on Mommy Guide Inc.'s Facebook page or Mommy Guide Inc.'s YouTube channel. Just always be kind and respectful. Our guest for tonight is David W. Ryan of Spooling Around. David is actually a graduate of the University of the Arts with a bachelor degree of uh, with a from okay again <laughs> with a bachelor of fine arts major in filmmaking. He has worked in film and television for over 25 years. Is an editor and he has been also an assistant editor he's also an avid crafts person and so is so do you see now why david is so perfect for our community right so he learned how to sew from his mother who is an accomplished quilt maker a seamstress and a puppet maker he started out making halloween costumes but then when he started making and altering clothes as well he just you know started to do sewing once again he has made props and costumes for his film projects and others and has made clothes and costumes also of course for his wife and daughter and when the pandemic started he made face masks to donate to medical workers when there was a shortage of protective equipment and just recently david started his own youtube youtube channel called spooling around to bring his filmmaking sewing and crafting skills together all right so with all of this in mind let's all welcome first time here at mommy guide inc my dear friend David W. Ryan. Hi, David. Hi. Thanks for, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Sorry, I messed up your 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 degree. I was like, how am I going to say it again? Anyway, That's thank right. you so much, David. <laughs> all right. So we were talking at the back, you know, behind the scenes. And they're like, 
we were, and then we realized, oh, it's 8.02. We should be going live. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry for coming in a little bit late, guys. And of course, let's say hi to everybody in the chat first, David. Okay, so that's me saying hi to everybody. And look, Dance Dave. <laughs> John Fulham, all right, the dear creator of OVFG, where David and I are proud members of, is here. There you go. Get those arms moving. <laughs> That's in New Jersey. They call him Dave the Dancer, but he's just shy about So maybe in the X show, John, <laughs> we can make him dance, right? All right. And Miss Katrina, hello, everyone. Okay, Batchmate. Hi, Kefterini. Hi, Charlene. That's such a witty channel name, David. Love it. Yes. Pulling oh, around. Thank you. Yes. And hello, Miss Kat. Wit. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good evening for some. Yes. Hi, Wit. Thanks for dropping by. Sprinkle with cards, Miss Zell. Good evening, everyone. BG mode lang. Don't have sewing stuff. All right. Okay. BG is like background. So they will just watch because they don't have a sewing machine with them right now. Good morning at Wit Prophet from my dear. Okay, uh, Super Fluke is my moderator. Okay, there you go. And good evening, Miss Gladys. Have you already, guys? Are you ready with your sewing machines? Or if not, take note. All right. So good evening, everyone. All right. So first and foremost, okay, so let's talk first a little bit with David. I know you guys are like, but David is. He's a guy, <laughs> right? For most of us, um, we're so used to seeing, you know, women sewing, but not, you know, not guys. So maybe you would want to, you know, in your own words, you know, just a little bit journey about why spooling around, you know, you are in, you know, filmmaking. Why not talk about or create a channel about filmmaking, right? But why, you know, actually about sewing, yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, like I said, I, I am I, I said something with this out of the way. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, like I said uh, in the in the intro, uh, I got really interested in it because I wanted a better Halloween costume than everyone, and that kind of led to other creative, you know, interests. I have a lot of hobbies, and uh, I kind of fell into filmmaking in college because I was originally going to go in for graphic design, and my roommate was in film major and he looked like he was having so much fun. I decided that was what I'd rather be doing. And uh, I realized that I could use these other craft skills I was using for my filmmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really use it that much for what I do now because I, I work, actually work in a lot of what, you know, we call reality TV. Uh, and I'm behind the scenes. I'm like, you know, doing the editing side of it. So I'm not really doing it in the production end of it mm -hmm. as much, but I've always kept up these craft things. And what, the reason I decided to do a sewing channel is partly because I there's this I, f I feel like there's a saturation of editing channels and, and production you know like people making YouTube videos about how to make YouTube videos and I didn't really want to go that route and uh, I just decided that you know there's other crafts I can use I can use my filmmaking knowledge to make interesting videos about the other things that I'm interested in if that makes sense yes you know? yes and All right. uh, because I've worked on like home improvement shows and like procedural things. And like, I'm the type of person, if, when I was working on some of these home improvement shows, I was like, oh, I always wanted to use that tool and end up going out and, and buying tools. I love tools. I haven't met a tool that I haven't liked yet. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm very, I'm very easily influenced. <laughs> All right. So that's a great idea, right? So um, on top of being strategic, it's also something that you actually would want to pursue, right? Because as you said in the, as we said in the intro, sewing was uh, something that you actually like because it's a creative outlet as well, right, David? Exactly. Exactly. All right. So guys, I know that probably most of you are not yet uh, subscribed to David. So um, if you um, actually um, have not yet, so you may want to go um, to his channel all right so it is called spooling around it's on okay sorry david i am like because you are so small compared to me so i just wanted to why didn't we okay. do this before when we were like talking at the back right i don't know <laughs> I, 
I should have done that. All right. So sorry about that, David. Anyway, so I should have done that. Um, and then, all right. So why is it that the is no longer showing? Anyway, so the basic parts. Okay. So that we, of course, our topic for today is you're going to go through the basics with us, right, David? Yeah. All right. Okay. So. When we talk about basics, we talk about we start with the machine itself, right? Yeah. Because actually, the reason why I at this age still don't know how because I was so afraid of, you know, accidentally probably I might sew my fingers. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I I was so that was one of the reasons why. But now I really want to actually learn, and in our community, there we love. Um, the, creating a lot of stuff, even sewing into paper. Mm-hmm. So most of us have machines, but we don't know really how to use it. So now, David, would you want to um, to start by, you know, introducing us first to the basics of this wonderful creative tool called sewing machine? Yeah, we'll start with uh, you know just kind of overview of the whole machine. All right. Let me go to the right camera here. So, like on. All, a lot of machines, they look different. Let me go to my, where's my, uh, hold on one second. Where's that? That's the view I want. Um, a lot of machines, they, they may be laid out differently, but they all basically do the same thing. Uh, if you can get another, there's other machines that are like specialized, like blind hem machines and sergers and stuff, but we're not going to talk about that right now because that's specialized. But mm-hmm. but basically, the all machines do a straight stitch, zigzags and, and then depending on how fancy your machine is it'll do a variety of other uh patterns and these all have different uses uh okay. for like uh you want to use like a zigzag for like stretchy materials because it, if it's a straight stitch it might pull um and you oh. can do there's really i thought those we'll were just for other... decoration <laughs> yeah another thing for decorations too but there's so actually like, uh, a, a purpose for it yeah mm. so like uh for example, like on mine, is it, we have a zigzag. You also have this, like, it's kind of like, a, I forget what they call this. Forgive me for not knowing the names of the actual stitch, but it's like a blind hem stitch where it'll, it, it goes straight and then it does a little jump and it'll do a little jump. So you can mm-hmm. catch a seam and when you fold it over, it, you don't even see the stitches. It's called a blind hem. So there's oh. there's different ways, different techniques you can learn. This machine also has an automatic button holder. Some of the older machines don't have this, but they had like an attachment that you could get that would do the same thing. All right. So I'm trying to look at those stitches here in my machine. All right. So guys, familiarize yeah. yourself. Okay. If you have questions, please feel free to just, you know, put them in the chat and I will try to pull it out and ask David. All right. So normally yeah. um, the stitches are in front, David, right? So whether it yeah. be so the, you should what have... you call that? You said it's not uh, it's not electric. It's ele- it's the uh, mechanical. So, yeah. So the mechanical machine is a, a, just an electric sewing machine, but it doesn't have like electronic parts like a. Like, some of the modern machines that have like a touch screen. I think the one you have actually is, would be considered electronic. It's got a little mm-hmm. LCD panel. And it's, there's a whole bunch of other stitches that are controlled by. Uh, it's like. I guess you could, almost like robotics. So it's moving the to create the different stitches. It's actually using little servo motors to move the the needle around. Okay. Whereas a mechanical machine has inside there's like different uh, gam cams and gears mm. that create those patterns. All right. Um. So it, the electronic I nothing nothing against electronic machines. I just don't happen to have any. Uh, and I tend to do uh, heavier duty fabrics a lot. Like I've, I've sewn a lot of leather and denim and those electronic machines may or may not handle that. They don't have quite have the torque and they're a little, I don't want to say fragile, but they might not have the same uh, resistance to get through all that fabric. It'll okay. be a little more delicate, Yes, yes. Um, I guess. So like I have, um, behind me, I have this, this uh, machine. This is oh, wow. probably as old as I am. This is a heavy duty uh, you know, I use this for like leather and uh, heavier fabrics, vinyl, things like that. Oh, um, all right. So, David, not yeah. all sewing machines can handle all kinds of fabric. Right. So, okay. So, but the ones that most people or most homes have can do 
the general kinds of fabric, right? Probably. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you can, can probably get on do... most. There's like you know basically two classes of machines. There's industrial and, and domestic is what they call them. So mm-hmm. you have most of your domestic machines. You can do just about anything on them. I wouldn't do a lot of heavy fabrics, but you I could hem know. jeans with it. most most modern machines can handle you know putting a new hem on, on denim. But if you're going through like six layers of leather and denim, I wouldn't do that. With, <laughs> yes, absolutely you know? can. <laughs> Let's just you know. do some of the chats again, David, before we continue. All right. So, um, Tina is saying hi to everybody. Hi, Tina. She's actually hi, one Tina. of my crafty sisters. Who's, yeah, you've seen her also on OBMG. She's part of OBMG. I saw yep. you standing there. <laughs> Done subscribing. Thank you, Charlene, for subscribing to David. Again, guys, Thank if you. you have not yet subscribed to David, he is actually this on YouTube. It's uh, spooling around. Okay, not spooling. It's with a G. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let me uh, like... Uh, okay. It's it's supposed to be with a G. All right? So, um, typo over there. All right? So, and then we have a Master Red coming in. All right? So, thank you. Thank you so much, Charles, for subscribing. And Roy says... Hey, David and Lala, busy morning. I'll catch you guys on replay. Thanks, Roy, for dropping by to say hi to David. Thanks, and Roy. hi, hello. Morning. Yes. And Charlene is laughing at Tina. Just subscribe, David. Thank you, Miss Gladys. Again, guys, Thank if you. you have not yet subscribed, promise it's really worth our time, especially for us because, you know, we're crafters. You know, sewing is part of, you know, our crafty journey. Master Red SB, thank you so much for dropping by, Po. Excited for tonight's stream. I love sewing. Yes, Miss Gladys. Let's do this. And hey, hi, Dockery. Sir Norman, thank you so much for the super sticker. And of course, hello, design on brand night shirt. David, perfect for you. Heather, hi, Heather. Yes, so our friends are here to support, of course, David. Yep. Queen B84, mega love Nerd shout shirt. out. <laughs> yes, David, is size 14 needle okay for the project tonight? It should be fine. Yeah. All right. I don't even know what this, you know. Oh, thank you so much, Charlene, for the 99 pesos super chat. All right. So I don't even know what the size 14 needle is. Okay. We'll ask the, um, David later. I think that's the wrong URL. Oh, it's just the name. The URL, John, is actually, yeah. and guys, is actually in the description. So if you're just going to YouTube, you can, you know, spooling around. It's searchable, in fairness. Yes, I found it. Yeah, they, I don't have enough subscribers yet to have a... Yeah, but like you a, can a find it. I tried. Out. Yeah, there you go. Thank yeah. you so much, Charlene. Yeah, so thank you so much, John, for the reminder, guys. So the URL exactly for David's uh, YouTube channel. Sam, can you put it down in the chat, sweetheart? So that the others can actually go directly. Thank you for sharing, Ate Margie, and hi- saying hi to everyone. All right, so now that we've seen the... What else is in the front of the sewing machine? What do you call that part? Dashboard? I don't know. Oops. Or what? just the Hold front on. side? Yeah. I mean, just the your front, your controls. I don't really know if it has a, a, specific, a specific name like name. that. But, All right. uh, you know, your controls would be in the front, or in this machine, it's like the to change... Mon- the stitches i have like it's just a dial here that changes the uh stitch settings mm. you can tell that's really clunky it's, it's all mechanic it's all gears Mm-mm. um so for those who have the electronic one they just need to press buttons right yeah just push the yes. button you need for it all right and uh so you know, up here up here you have the, your controls for your tension and your thread length Bring it a little closer all right so like this dial controls the length of the stitch. So one being like really short. If you're doing a buttonhole, you want to put it in like okay. the, this, David, this what, the. what is like the like an oh, icon? I can't. Hold on. For when you that. say um, length, yeah. stitch length. So what that means is the icon. All what right. So that? depending on. Sorry, so I was trying to figure out what buttons I put things. On. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> um, Depending on uh, how it's this the actual stitch length. So if you have um, you want to make it 
it'll can put more stitches per inch or less depending on how long you make it so like if you put it all the way as long as the farthest setting mm -hmm. it's what we call a basting stitch where it will be just the, the stitches will be like you know longer it, it basically pulls the fabric through faster so it makes the stitch longer mm -hmm. and a longer stitch might be good for like i said if you're trying to tack, you want to kind of test something out, baste it together to make sure it's going to work. It'll be easy to pull those seams out. Uh, uh, a smaller stitch is going to be stronger. So there than, is no standard. Is there like a, let's say if right. I don't know what to do, is there a standard number for um, uh, space? Yeah, it depends on the fabric you're using. So like a mm -hmm. cotton, I usually put it between a two or a three, depending on what I'm making. Right. Uh, if you get into like uh, your like polar fleece or sweatshirt material you might want to use a longer stitch because it's got to go through more material so it's kind of like sort of go around all that material so you, you want to use a longer stitch so it doesn't bunch up oh okay i got it i got it so for what we're yeah. making tonight since we're doing cotton between yeah. two to so, three uh, would be fine yeah two or three would be fine all right yeah and uh again we're looking at like difference between some machines Older machines, uh, like you had, there's what's called thread tension. So it depends on how tight this thread is pulled. Uh huh. It has to go through the machine. There's a little disc on some of those older machines. Like um, you actually have to do that manually. The newer machines will do it automatically. They'll 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 sense. There's like a I'm not sure exactly the gear, however that works, or electronics will sense how much tension is on and will adjust it automatically. So that's something on newer machines you don't really have to worry about as much. Uh, you okay. can adjust these, like this would be the th my uh, tension. I have it set to auto, but if for some reason I needed to make it looser or tighter, I can I can adjust okay. it there. So the but numbers would... go from one to how, five or? One to five, yep. Yeah. So zero would be, the, be like no tension. Uh, no I don't tension. know what you would need that for. But... <laughs> But so on this if machine, it's cotton, yeah, it normally, uh, what do you suggest? For... Yeah, probably between a, a three and a four. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I will adjust already. Okay. So your machine, I think your if yours is electronic, it should do that automatically. Just set it to auto if you have that option. That's I... usually the best. Electronic. <laughs> some are still mechanical. Some are, you know, yeah. electronic. So guys, how about you guys? Put your what kind of sewing machine you have in the chat so we know, all right? All right. Yeah. So that's the tension and then we had the what do you call it again? David's uh, stitch so, length. The first stitch one? length. Yes, yep. stitch length and then the tension. Yeah, tension's on this. And then actually I'm going to switch back to stick man other. And then this dial will this is for if you're doing zigzags. Or you can you can also change your needle position. So if I'm doing a zigzag stitch, this this dial will determine how wide the zigzag is. So okay. if you want to do like a little a little bit of zigzag or a lot, depending on the type of fabric or the, the what you need it for. Oh. Like if it's a stretch, you want to go a little bit wider. But it also changed the position of the needle. You can see down. There, so if I'm moving this over, see how the, I don't know if you can see that. Uh-huh. See how it will actually right. move the needle over to the left or the right. Oh, yeah. See the needle moving. So what yeah. are you adjusting at this point, David? That that is the uh, zigzag setting, which is on this machine, it's this. See it's got a little zigzag symbol. Put it at zero, then it's a straight stitch. Oh, that okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay, so if you like put it in a different number, say one or two, yeah. what does that do? So it'll make it a little bit, so as, the sewing, as it sews, it'll move the needle left and right. And it'll create a, a right. little big stitch. Okay, and then the okay. further, the bigger the number, the further it'll move back and forth. Ah, uh, all right, all right. So if you're just doing like a regular straight stitch, zero yeah. is okay. But if you're doing yeah. those fancy stitches, then you have to move it a little bit. Right. Okay, got it. So then we're moving down to, again, we, we're going to talk a little bit about needles. Let me see if I can. 
Oh yes, so somebody in the chat, Tina asked about you know she wanted to use a fourteen and if that's okay. Yeah. Yes. So I think I have an all-purpose needle in here. Let me see what size I actually have in this. And it should actually be imprinted somewhere on the needle. <laughs> they just that. okay. So they are there. All right. Oh. Yeah, it's hard to see, uh, but they come in a little case. Let me. So when you buy needles, it'll come in like a little box with the numbers. So like this is a denim. Is that focusing? It's hard to focus. There. But there'll okay. be a number. So there, those I'll are actually needles with different sizes, David. Yeah. And John is asking if your daughter sews. You know, I've been trying to teach her, but uh, she's got other interests right now. Wow. <laughs> so, yes. She actually took, does. I'll take that back. She, it took me 40 me years to be interested in sewing. <laughs> yeah. She Okay, I'll take that back. She has been doing some hand sewing. She's made like little sock puppet monsters and stuff. Uh, uh, not just the, the machine sewing. Yeah, she hasn't. She hasn't. She's a little. I think she's a little intimidated by the sewing machine. Yeah, I'm, I'm I think trying was to... at her age probably. Um, and uh, yep. Tina is saying I have a Burnett B38. What is that? I have no idea. Tina, what is a that's, a? that's a sewing machine model. Oh, that's the model. All right, there you go. Yeah. And Tina is saying hi to John. Since it's a singer, what does it sing? <laughs> there you go, John. You know, I miss John. <laughs> It, it sometimes it doesn't know the word, so it just hums. <laughs> and Dina say hi to Judy. I heard you're so you so good. Yes, there's a crafty in Miss Blink. Hi Tina from John, and everybody saying hi to everybody. Okay, Gladys, I have the sewing genie. Unfortunately, it's not cooperating right now. Oh no! I hope you make it work. And Ati Margie saying hi to everyone and to you, David. Hello. So Norman, thank you, thank you so much for the super chat as well. So. All right. Okay. Now we see David already placed uh, the needle. Yeah, so David uh, is placing the needle in the machine the same in every machine. Or it's uh, also it different. might be it, it, the only thing that might be a little different is uh, some machines, depending on which way the bobbin is oriented. Mm -hmm. You might have to put the needle in. There's a it's hard to see. There's like a, a yeah, flat side to the needle. Oh, there's a so flat like side, a, right? Okay. Yeah. So depending on which way the bobbin is in the machine, and I'll explain that in a minute, depends on which way the flat side goes. So if it's like. Uh, if it, you should check your, your owner's manual, but like on this machine, this one is a, a vertical, it's front facing, so okay, the, yes. the the flat part goes to the back. Ah, so if it's front facing, the flat has to go to the back. If it's like yeah. me, it's upward, upward facing. It it probably if it's a, a drop in bobbin, it's probably the same thing. But sometimes ah. in some machines, the bobbin is this way. Ah, like, yes. Yes, on the so side. It's like, yes. Instead of being this way, it's a lot. Of, a lot of your industrial machines, the bobbin comes in sideways, uh, as right. opposed to facing you. Okay. I'm gonna bring the camera what down. What do you just call that? Me. The one that you're holding. <laughs> okay, this that is a bobbin thing. case. Let me. Right. Yeah. Let me, I'm just gonna position this a little bit lower, so you can see. Again, here. guys, if you have questions, just put them in the chat. John is saying you make some cool shirts. Why do you figure? How do you? Uh, what do you figure? The I don't know how to read. I promise. <laughs> what do you figure the final cost is for the average shirt that you make? Is it less oh, if than I make buying it, um... one at the store? What do you think, Dave? I tend to buy my fabrics uh, on sale. Like I buy a lot of clearance stuff because, mm -hmm. and a lot, a lot of the stuff I make is from Halloween uh, prints. So I'll try to buy that when it's like either after season if there's any left or. Oh yeah, so if they've seen your post in your socials for today's show, right? You 
created a sample and it has like a, a, a skull. No, was it? Yeah, skull? Little, this is like a skull yeah. print. Yeah. Yeah. So that's from Halloween prints, probably. Yeah, it was a Halloween print right. from Joanne's. There you go. But uh, yeah, so it, I, you know, I don't really know if it's if it's any cheaper than uh, I mean, I'm sure. It, yes. But in terms of time, sometimes it takes me probably if I had to put a, a labor cost into it, it probably wouldn't be any less expensive than mm. going out and buying a yeah, shirt, yes. but. You know, the but, idea is that it's something that nobody else has. It's unique. It's custom exactly. made. And it's made with tender love and care, right? Because <laughs> she created yeah, so, it. All right. It's right. a little bit of bragging rights, you know? <laughs> exactly. And Victor is saying, we treading the needle? Almost, almost. David is going to show we're, us. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> this, is a, this is a long overview. So in your machine... So this is a, like I said, this is the bobbin case. Uh -huh. This is hard to. Oh, this yes. yeah. Can we turn? Can we use the front uh, camera, David? Oh shoot! I thought I switched it. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. That's what I was doing. And it's a little dirty in there, <laughs> but so this is the uh, bobbin case. Uh huh. Uh, and the bobbin will go in here, and. Good tip, but you also want to, you know, one of the things you need to keep an eye on is, you know, maintaining your machine. So these all come out. This whole case will pop out. Oh, really? So you can clean it. Yeah. Okay. Mine doesn't have a case. Um, it's just, you can just put the bobbin. You just inside. have a drop in. Yeah. So that's a, that's a newer machine. Yeah. Then that's, those are easier to keep clean, but you have a. So you can actually remove memory. those for those who have this kind of uh, machine, okay? So David yeah. pulled out everything, okay? Now yeah. and he's putting them back again one by one. Yeah. So so this uh this part that moves is called a race. Uh huh. R A C E. Is it? And then this is like a clip ring to just hold it in place. But sometimes this is if your machine jams, you might need to just pop these things out and find a little piece of thread that got stuck. So don't be afraid. You can actually remove yeah, Don't be afraid to take thing. it apart. Yes. If I can get... It just should just snap back into place like that. All right. My fat thumbs are in the way. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So there. And then finally, the bobbin case. Bobbin case. And this has a little... There's a little spring bar pulled yes. out. So you can hold it. And it'll clip back right in there. Okay, uh, okay, you can click it. All right. And then close it. Yeah. All right. So, guys, okay. any questions thus far? Okay. So, any questions? Look at your sewing machines in front of you right now and ask. This is the perfect time for you guys to ask David because if you ask me later, I don't know the answer. So, we have to <laughs> ask David right here. Okay. It's cool that it's unique and a David Ryan original. Indeed, John. There you Victor. Mine doesn't have a case to just drop in. All right, so yeah, at nice. least that's uh, one thing that uh, okay we can actually start easier with, right? Okay, but I also have that kind of machine. My other machine does have that bobbin case and those removable things that I freak out when one time I, I tried to use it and they fell apart. <laughs> oh no! So when that happens, was I doing something wrong, David? That's why when and it's, you know, maybe something just wasn't clicked in all the way. I'm uh, not sure. so it wasn't I... pushed in exactly. Yeah. All right. So after we've, you know, um, we know already the different parts. Know how do we start sewing? What? All right. What do first we put we, in first? First, we just, we're gonna thread it up and. All right. So if we're gonna need some thread. There's the thread, you can get in a whole discussion about that for this. I'm just using a, uh, this is a polyester thread. You can get cotton thread depending on, again, what you're making. Uh, th cotton thread will, it's, you know, it's organic it's cotton. It'll, it'll wash a little differently. It might stretch. Polyester thread, depending on how old they get, they, you know, I, I, I'm actually, I'm sort of lost my train of thought there, but oh wow, you I didn't look know for, like, that you actually have different kinds of threads. I thought a thread. Yeah, there's different thread. choices in thread. 
Uh, some have a little bit of elastic in it if you're trying to, again, if you want to do something stretchy, like a, like you're doing like a lycra spandex or mm -hmm. you can get like some elastic threads. Those, those can be a little tricky because you can, they'll bind up or pull. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this, we're just using an all purpose uh, thread. It's a polyester. And the first thing you want to do is load your bobbin. And the bobbin is a little tiny spool. For this machine, it's a little clear uh -huh. thing. So some now, are this, plastic, some are... Uh, yeah, they're either plastic or metal. Yes, plastic or metal. And it depends on, again, this is like, it's depending on the machine to make. Uh, singers use a different type of uh, bobbin versus uh, Bernita or Brother. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, so whatever it's somewhat they standardized. have, all right, so use that. Yeah, so make again, you know, check your manual or look up what your. Uh, keep doing that. That's the one that I want. Okay. All right. So, so we start with the thread. Yep. Yeah. So first thing you want to do is put your thread in. There's a spool. Some machines are sideways like this one. Other ones are vertical with mount on the back. Oh, some are really like that. I thought you were supposed to yeah. put it up. No. Oh, that's the use of that one. <laughs> yeah. I have so that. Like that. I, you know, I don't know where I'm supposed to put that. So that's where you put it. <laughs> yeah. So th this will lift the thread up so it moves gently around the spool. Oh, cool. So again, it's, this is depending on how your machine is laid out but the mm -hmm. basic function should be about the same. On this machine, you can see there's a little path, which actually shows you which way to roll the thread. Mm -mm. Bring that up a little closer. So, right. so this actually, you just look at the diagram that tells you how to oh, run it next, to, right? to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Right there. So I'm gonna put it through this little clip there. And then it comes under and over this okay oh david can we like uh put the camera a little bit up there you go there you go thank you yeah. i get so focused on the the task i forget about the camera oh you turn it around that way yeah so i'm gonna bring it over here and that just pops on this little spool on top there Actually, got to put the thread in it first. That would help. <laughs> There's a little tiny hole. Okay. So you want to come up in between the, the okay. sides. David, your your picture in picture is covering the the upper. Oh part. shoot! <laughs> Can we put the peep below? Still yeah. there, but a little bit down. Okay, there you go. How's that? All right, all right, all better. Right. Okay, so that's so, the bobbin. Do you call that the bobbin? <laughs> Yeah. All right. There's a little hole right there. You just want to pull that up. Okay. And just snap it in there. Now, this machine. Okay. A little bit higher, just... David, the camera, please. Oh, yeah, I see your crop there. Okay. There All right. you go. All right. That better? So there's a hole All in right. the bobbin that you put or you stick the end, one end of the thread. Okay. Yep. So this is actually connected to the bigger thread in the, right. what do you call that thing, thread? So we're going to wind some thread from this to that so they match. Okay. Yeah. So to engage this, you're just going to pop it over to the right. Oh, wow. And what this will do, on some, machine, on some machines you'll have a, uh, there's like on the, the dial to turn the needle, there's actually a thing that will pull out. Uh-huh. It's basically a clutch that takes it disengages it from the drive to the sewing machine and just puts it on the, the bobbin motor. So then you're going to gently press your foot pedal. So it takes it up. Make sure this happens sometimes it gets underneath. Oh yeah. It goes down, right? So it will yeah, get it got caught underneath. I, gotta oh, do I thought that, that again. was just my problem. Okay. So it can happen. Yeah. Okay. Yep, it happens. So I'm going to keep a little tension on it, hold it in place. So then once you get that going, 
Let me see that. Let me try that. Guys, are you trying this alongside David? So you can try. Yep. It came off my little uh, guide here too. So I'm going to give a little pressure. All right. So now, once I, once you get it, you see it's starting to slip under the spool again. I don't know why it's doing that. It's camera shy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> there you go. Katina is saying, I just love spinning the bobbin with the thread. Sometimes they get all tangled up. Okay, that's, that's what yeah. really happened a while ago. Yeah. All right. So I, got, I think I got it working now. So. Hello, Miss Igarota. Then you can just, once you have this set up, then you can literally just, you can you can floor the pedal and it'll go. How, how do you know, uh, when do you say, David, that you have already enough thread in the bobbin? When do you stop? Uh, it should, it should actually stop automatically. So oh, you can see this really? little, oh. yeah. So this little plastic, uh, this little disc that sticks out, you can actually adjust this to the de a depth, oh. but it should stop before the spool is overfilled. Oh, so even if It'll you step on it, it clock. will no longer work. I mean, it will no longer turn around. Yeah. It'll pop it out. So it just get. Oh. That's awesome! Alright guys, again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on uh, David's uh, YouTube and channel, Spooling Around. Alright, so it stopped? So yeah, that it means it's okay. Up, but yeah, that's, that's, a, that's full enough. But uh, All right. I'm not sure why it's doing that. So then you okay. pop it, pop the thing back in place. Okay, and then you just remove that. So now you yep. have the same thread, color thread, okay, on top on and top now and on your bobbin. There, there are some cases where you may want to do a uh, different a color, different color mm -hmm. on the top and bottom, but it's important to make sure that you're using the same type of thread because if you, if you mix like, uh, if you mix different uh, like thickness of thread, it, they, they could actually cause some issues with uh, oh. binding and bunching. Uh, all right. So color there, there are cases where you yeah. might want to use two different types of thread, but I don't. Um, for now, so we're, especially we're because this is a beginner sewing class, so exactly. uh, I mean stream. So guys, make sure that it's the same. Okay, material, just different color. Yeah. Okay. All right. So to load the bobbin. Let's open this up again. So take our bobbin case. You're gonna take your thread and hold it in front of you. Make like a uh, like a number nine. Mm -hmm. So the thread's on facing you. It's on your oh, I right didn't side. know that. Okay. Yep. So again, the thread should be in front of you. Yeah, so like on your hanging to your right. So it looks like a number nine. Okay. So it should look like that. Let me just pop it in there. And then there's this little groove. There's this metal like a uh, cover. It's a sp it's actually spring loaded. Uh -huh. You want to get the thread under there and just give it a little tug. And I just broke my thread. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> <laughs> so the trick is to get it under that. All right. So that okay, it there you sits go. right inside there. Okay. See that? Yes, yes. And it should roll. There should be a little resistance, but it should roll relatively freely. Okay. All right. Then we're just going to slip that into the... Poker, hello! Thanks for dropping by and subscribing! Yes, please do subscribe as well to David. His uh, channel is... Okay, I've asked um, my moderator to put the link in the chat. I'll send it as well to Tina. 
So, Sis Tina, I think our moderator is, <laughs> I don't know, is missing in action. Can you please put uh, David's uh, link in the chat as well? Thank you. Yeah. I'm seeing some comments on, on my uh, Facebook page. Yes. So, guys, we're pairing actually. So, for those who are watching on David's YouTube channel, thank you so much. It's just that he's doing a demo right now. So, we cannot answer you guys just yeah. yet. Yes. And we have Matt. Hi, Matt. Matt has, guys, of all things, YouTube in the house. Thanks for dropping by, Matt. I think Matt might be coming from your channel. All right, there you go. All right, so threading the machine now. So this a, you know, still basic. This gives me a uh, little guide on the top, tells you which way to, you know, gives you little arrows to show you which way to thread. On this machine, this little hook right here mm -hmm. has this tiny little, has another little metal flat spring. So you want to get the thread in between that. And it'll, that's a thread guide. Older machines may or may not have that. Then we're just going to come down this side of the this little groove here and I'm gonna come up the, to the other side. I'm going to turn my needle so I get this this hook here. Can you see that? And it's a take up a take up arm. I'm going to come down here and we'll move down to our needle. All right. Okay guys, sorry we um I gave Tina the wrong link. <laughs> That's for the link for this stream today. David, uh, I mean, Tina is going to put down the right link. Okay, in a bit. All right, there you go. Let's try to get this as low as I can get it. <laughs> that lined up right in there. <laughs> so literally, guys, look. So, Tina said, sorry, the thread. <laughs> the YouTube thread <laughs> got tangled up. Sorry. Now, this is the real link. Okay, Sistina, please put it down. <laughs> there you go. This is really the real channel link. All right, there you go. Being put down by Tina, this is it, guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you've put All right. in the bobbin down below. If you guys have questions in how to do that, I hope that you try doing this together with us so that you can see so that you can see if it's working for you or not. Again, um, yep. your machine might have a slightly different way of doing it. So refer to your machine's manual if possible. All right. So there's a little hook underneath. I'm not sure if you can see that. I can't get the tripod any lower. Yes, we see it, David. Don't worry. Yes, yep. we see it. And then there's one other guide in the behind, just above the needle, there's a little hook in there too. You know what, David? The, I, I would just have, it took me forever to find how to actually slide the thread onto that hook. I don't know where the opening of that hook is. Yeah, it depends on the machine. On this one, it's on the, it's on the right side. Yes, the same with mine. And guys, it's like right side, but at the back. So, yeah. not just to the right, but right and then the back sometimes. So, I almost cried. I said, I can't do this. Uh, real important, when you're throwing, you make sure your, your presser foot is up. We, I actually didn't talk about this part yet. There's a okay. couple of things So, here. what is the presser foot, David? Which, which yeah, exactly so is, is your, the presser foot? So, this is your presser foot. You can get, there, there's a variety of different feet right. you can get for different functions. We're using uh, an all-purpose general purpose foot for this okay. but there's things like uh zipper foots that have a narrow profile so that uh, it goes right up against the edge of a zipper when you're doing those yes. things so there's probably little... for the zipper foot guys and how to make a zipper we have to watch out for that in david's channel today is just really basic guys all right so we're just yep, using really the basic. regular but if you need it foot okay yeah 
if you needed to change it, uh, it depends on the machine also. Some some machines you have, there's a little screw here to change the whole bar, but this one has a spring release. So oh. there's a little bar in the back. Okay, so there's a little... spring release. Yep. Check oh, yeah, there you want to put that... I see it. Okay. Yep. So then if you want to put it back, all you have to do is drop the foot down. Oops. Right over that bar. And then click it again, it'll click into place. Oh, cool. And then it clicks back into place, right? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Now, underneath here, see this this rigid, these uh, these bars with the ridge? Mm -hmm. That's actually called the feed dog. And that's what will pull the fabric through the machine. Oh. So as I'm turning it, you can see that it moves forward and back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, okay. So it's called the, again? Feed dog. Yep. Feed dog. And this is this is partly what controls the stitch length. So if you change the stitch length, it will pull it further back as it moves. So Does that makes sense. Yes. Tina is saying, I think there's a small percentage of population that really needs the manual, and we need them yeah. in our life. <laughs> yes. I hate manuals. I hate reading manuals. I would, that's why I just go to YouTube. But sometimes there are really times you need to actually read the manual, guys. Yep. In the tech world, they say RTFM. What's that? Read the effing manual. <laughs> there you go, guys. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. All right. So, this is where the threading the needle, uh, depending on your <laughs> dexterity and eyesight, is where it can be challenging. This machine has an automatic threader, which oh, I love. Wow, well, that's so awesome. So this little bar comes down, and there's a tiny little hook that goes right into the eye of <gasps> the needle. I and you just really... want to bring. I think so I have it... that. Hold on. Yep. I never thought. That's the purpose for that one. Okay, I'll try again. Yep. Okay, so... So then all you have to do, you bring it down, have that little hook through the eye of the needle, pull the thread across and just let it go and it'll pull it through the needle hole, the eye. And you just pull it through. Oh my goodness, David! <laughs> That's super amazing! If you, if you don't have that... Um, there's also, a, you can get this tool. This is like a dollar or two dollars at Joanne Fabrics or your other fabric stores. Okay. And it Again, works David, kind of the for same that way. to work, David, you need to put the thread across that hook and then put yes. it to the back or in front. Yeah. It just goes right here and across. There's a little, like, uh, you get it right in between here and there's a tiny little hook inside and it'll pull it through. Sorry, David. Can we do that one more time? Can we remove the yeah, thread? Yeah, let me pull it out. Needle? I'll unthread it again. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I really need to learn this part. So I am asking David to do it again. Sorry, David. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right. All right. So you bring this down, and it goes right into the needle. Okay. So I can get in any closer. Let's see if I can get any closer with that. Okay. It's there in the right. needle, and then... Yeah, so holding it there, so it goes under this hook and across okay. inside the, the little like fork, and it'll pull it right through the needle. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Hold on. Come on, thread, <laughs> go in. Okay, so I have to put it uh, at the back of that. No, across the front of across the front of the needle. So you're just going to go across the front of this, right into the front of the needle. Across the front of it. What? Sorry, David. It's okay. I, I, guys, did you get it? I can't. <laughs> You can't okay. get it? Okay, David, can I see? Can I show you my. Yeah. All right. Okay, there. Let's show them. <laughs> okay. Oh, can't. 
Okay, how about doing that? Alright, and doing this. How is that? Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, can't. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I was trying to do this, right, David? Alright. And then this yeah. one, this thread, I need to put exactly where. So make sure your needle's in the highest, the most, as high as it'll go. That's. Yes. Okay. It actually, I the can't... thing is already holding it. Yeah. So it'll come, it'll come around and it should stick a little hook into the eye of the needle. It will. Can't, I can't really see yours. You have to bring your camera angle. at the level of the needle. I know guys. I know. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Tina is telling me to put my camera down like so there you go david all right that's better okay so now i it's like that right yeah all right and then where do i put this so you want to run the thread let's see there should be a little should be a little hook on the left side of the arm that sticks into the needle this one you want to go yep ah. there the little hook that sticks into the needle. This one? Yeah. Okay, what do I do with so that? On the left side of the little arm that swings in, there should be a little hook sticking down. If you can see on this side, you want to go under that and across. And then, a, so it's like a little, is it a little, like a little fork that goes around the needle? A little fork that goes around the needle. Ay, nako, guys, it's gonna take me forever to find that. <laughs> okay, I'll just find it later. But anyway, it's somewhere okay. here, David. Then the last step. Okay. You're gonna pull Let's go a back bit to David. I will figure this your... out somehow. Okay. <laughs> so I've got a little thread through the needle. Now I want to take up, uh, pull up the bobbin. So what I need to do is hold mm -hmm. this down. You're gonna turn the dial, the Rotate that towards you, and you can see it pulls the thread down. You can see it; it's, it's coming across the front of the bobbin case. Oh yeah! You see that? Yes, yeah. yes. So once you do a full rotation, give this thread a little tug, and oh, it should there pull. It is. Yep. And then now you're threaded. So I would next I would get a piece of scrap material if you have any or practice with paper if you have it. Oh paper is and, good. Uh, yeah, we love paper yeah. in our community. We have a lot of paper. Yeah. And it's gonna give it a little gentle press. That looks pretty good. Wow. So um, the front and the back should look uh, okay, right? Not just the front. Yeah. So it should, it should be nice and flat. This actually, I probably want to increase my stitch length a little bit, but you can see how, how tight those stitches are. Mm -hmm. So that's a two. Oh. I'm gonna push it up to like so a three. So when that happens, what do we need to adjust? The tension or the thread length? Thread length. The thread stitch length. length. Okay, yeah. stitch length. Stitch length. So on... Some machines have this little feature. There's a little blade right on the side of the machine. Uh-huh. So you can literally just pull this over. And oh, so it's that's supposed what to it's cut for. your thread. I actually yep. have that. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> so that's a cutter. Yep, it's a little cutter. Wow, amazing. And if not, just use uh, snips or scissors. I never knew I had that. Thank you, David. You're welcome.
Guys, have you seen that? We have a cutter beside ours. I got extra threads all over the place now. All right, so guys, now, if, if you, you have questions, do... just put them in the chat. Yeah. Automatic threader. What madness is this? Exactly, Heather. I didn't know about that, too. You have to bring your car. Yes, Tina. Thank you so much, friend. Where's yeah. the manual? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find the manual, most of them are available online. Exactly. Even for the old machine. Hi, Jason. Thanks for dropping by, Anna. And so, Jason say hi to David. There you go. Wow, look at that machine, guys. So, just kind of get an idea from the, this is this is an old older machine. I was talking about uh, thread tension, like you can see here. This is an actual manual thread tension disc. So if you have, uh, I know someone watching this has, has an old machine. Threading this is a little bit different. Oh. I'll bring, I'll turn this around. I hope there's a, if you don't have the manual already like me. Yeah. Because you know, my mom, she likes, removes all the manuals. And then she puts them in a certain place. But I don't know where it is now. So <laughs> all the manuals oh, no. are gone. So for a machine like this, I'm going to put... Where's my thread? Just as an example here. So David, when you, your channel name is spooling. So this is what, basically what you're doing is spooling, right? So is spooling yep. very important? If we do this part wrong, will it mess up our sewing? Yeah, if your if your if your machine isn't threaded correctly, uh, it will. You can bind. It'll bunch up. It it, won't, it might even break the thread. Uh, you could even break a needle. So, oh. um, this so is, this is actually a very important part. Yeah. Let's see where is that? I, uh, so for I'll just. I just want to show for, for people with older machines just a little Yes, how... yes. We have people who have older machines. Thank you so much, David. Yeah. So there. David is uh, going to demonstrate how to spool using an older mach machine. Heather is saying, I can thread mine and make it go. That's where my knowledge ends. It's amazing yeah. the things I've made only knowing that much. I'd love to know how yeah. to use the other they're, stitches. And they're, they're fairly, you know, it's, they can be, these machines can be either really fickle or really easy to use. Um, but for these older machines, you have your tension disc. Bring this down here. So I'm going to thread this. You want to kind of hold your hold the thread in place. You're going to give it a little tug, mm -hmm. and you hear it click into place. Oh yeah, I heard the click. Okay. Yeah. And this one, you actually have to, has a hole. You actually have to feed it through. Oh, there I see it. That that thing. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I don't have the plug. And then threading this is because this doesn't have this. This again doesn't have the uh, the fancy automatic threader. Uh -huh. So I have to do I this think by that's hand. The one I'm going to use now because I still can't figure out how to do that automatic. <laughs> and uh, a tip is sometimes you might need to just if your thread isn't going in the needle, just take the scissors. And just cut it at a very slight angle and make a little sharp point on the thread. Uh huh. This is Charlene, sure. this is for you. I hope that you are watching this intently because this is probably, most probably, the way that you are supposed to thread your machine later on. Yeah. Kind of. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, so this is challenging. Oh, I actually am using a magnifying glass right now. Yeah. So tweezers are your friends. Oh, yeah, you're right. Just run it through the middle of your foot and you should be ready to sew. 
And then like again with it with this if you want to adjust like you keep this relatively on a, a two or a three especially for cottons and the polyester thread I've really had to change this much, but there's something if you see like it's if it starts bunching up under the fabric of what we call a uh, something called bird nesting, you'll see like it'll mm -hmm. the bottom will get all tangled up on the bottom. Then it might be a thread tension issue. Uh, there's a number of things your needle when might be. When that happens, um, David, the thread uh, tension meaning is it's too um, tight. It, it could go either way. It could be too tight or too loose. Ah, uh, so either like way. if it's really, all right. yeah. So you kind of have to you kind of have to like. Play with it. That's why I practice with uh, scraps and oh, pieces. Oh, so that's that why you start first with the scrap fabric, not immediately with the. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to dive into sewing. You want to make sure that it's all. You want to make make that's sure it's working. Set it up first. Okay. And uh, I'll put this out of the way. So if you don't have the fabric, uh, David said you can use paper. Yeah, just to get an idea. And if you do, if it does get messed up, then this tool is your best friend. It's the seam ripper. So like, let's go back here. So this is a seam ripper. And this has a sharp point on one end. There's a little tiny blade in the middle and a little round spot. So if you have to pull out a seam, We can do this with just a single stitch. You kind of want to get underneath those top threads and just cut a bunch of them. You gotta be careful not to poke a hole in your fabric. <coughs> and then you can just pull it and the whole thing will come apart. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot I was. <laughs> I forgot to turn off my mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Sorry, sorry. Weird. All right. Yes, there. Charlene is saying thank you for demonstrating because that's very similar to the machine that she's going to use later. Yes. And Great. we have Janet of Animal Paradise Communication and Healing. Hi, Janet. Good morning to you as well. What a great idea. Tweezers. <laughs> yep. And Seam Reaper is my BFF. I'm like somebody I like to think about. I treat these, you know, like any other power tool. You got to take care of it. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure you clean it frequently. I need to get some uh, lint out of this, but there's. Uh, you make sure you oil it again. Check your manual. See where you're, what where you're supposed to oil it. How often? And these machines will last for years. Uh, you can say like it's got a, you know, this is a fifty. This machine is as old as I am. You know. <laughs> So, and uh, we've got like Charlene's Charlene's machine. You know that's that'll last another hundred years. I, I have friends in, in the communities that I belong to that that refurbish antique machines that are 150 years old, and they're still able to sew with them. You know the the ones with the treadle pedal. You know, so if you take care of your machine, it'll 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 take care of you for a long time. Exactly. So it doesn't matter how old the machine is, as, as long as you have kept it. Uh, yep. Uh, and you can well, find, uh, if you want to buy a machine, you know, if you're just starting out, I would go to like a local thrift store. You can find, uh, there's around here, there's tons of them for sale under $100. Probably can get one for 20 or $30. Uh, and it's worth it to take it to like a repair, uh, like a a place that will refurbish them, get the belts checked, they'll mm -hmm. clean it and oil it. It seems like it, it might cost you another hundred dollars. Oh, which when seems you do like that, expensive. David, yes. How often do but, you actually need to have it like checked? I mean, if it's they 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 want you, they tell me to if you're using your machine heavily, you should do that at least once a year. Mm -hmm. um, if you're using it like you know as, as a hobby every once in a while, and probably not that often, uh, I had. Mm -hmm. Like, well, this is one of the first machines I, I bought. I bought this brand new in like 2000. No, 2005 I got this. All right, and so over almost was, two decades. Yeah. And uh, I had, it was giving me some trouble. I 
took it to the, the the mechanic. They refurbished it. It runs better than it did when it was brand new. So wow. it's definitely worth it. Yeah, um, it's actually one of my favorite machines. Um, there but again, you go. It's, it's so the basic also, as David machine. said, you just need to always just, just like any tool, you know, take care of it, right? There you go. Yeah. All right. And uh, Heather is saying love hate relationship with my seam reaper taking out stitches is the opposite of sewing absolutely all right there you go Love oh yeah that actually machine just show you the, i got week. this uh this actually lights up it's got a little light built into it so uh it makes it easier to see what you're doing you oh wow see that. yeah yes <laughs> we actually have tweezers with lights yeah in our community as well all right, so now that we have threaded it, okay, maybe you want to look at your FB also and uh, see if people are asking anything. I don't know. Um... Okay, there you go. Nice, David. Tina yeah. is saying, like a lightsaber. <laughs> Tina is saying that's like a lightsaber. Yeah, it's a little. <laughs> <laughs> right? There you go. All right, see, Tina's name is Tina One Kenobi. That's her channel name. She's our crafty Jedi. Yep. <laughs> it's a so saber. It's a so saber. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's an elegant weapon from a more civilized time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, fancy with lights. I need that and magnifying glass. Yep. Me too, Janet. All right. Where can we buy those? <laughs> Uh, I got this online uh, from madamso.com. Not oh, sponsored. But, uh... <laughs> Not sponsored, yes. A light up seam reaper so you can clearly see your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, you can clearly see your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Heather. All right. So now that we have perfectly threaded our machine, okay, uh, what's fine? And then we have tested it, and David said, okay, this is enough tension. He has adjusted it. So now we move on to, are we ready to actually start the project, David, if we're at this level? I think level? we are. All right. So guys, I All know right. David gave us the dimensions and the materials that we actually need for tonight's uh, project. So if you did prepare, Okay, so now let's go on and watch how David is actually going to put that project into fruition. So let's watch David. All right. So here's what we're going to be making. This is a, a very simple lined, I know it sounds scary, lined drawstring bag. with a, And this is just made from four pieces of material that are, they said, are, are sizes... Oh, there were questions, David, earlier on that they yeah. don't have uh, the inner fabric. What do you call that? The liner? Lining. Okay, the light. Is it okay to not have the lining? Uh, I mean, it, it's part of how it's... Does it not have, only only have two pieces of fabric or what's the... Because it doesn't matter what... It, as long as there are four pieces. The way, the way this pattern works, it really oh, needs to have that. a liner. All right. And yeah. then <laughs> Tina's like planning to use... You know, those, uh, it's not really, it, it looks like fabric, but it's actually not fabric. Like the ones we use for laundry. Oh, like a nylon? Uh, maybe something like that. So that's possible. I don't know what. Yeah, any, any, this, is a, this is a really simple project. So anything, any material will work, you know. Um, All right. You can, and, you can, and the nice thing about this, you, be, you could actually scale this up or, or down depending on what you want it to do. So just we're just working yes. with like four rectangles. All right. So again, the, the yeah. sizes, the dimensions for those who probably weren't able to um, read the instructions. Okay, uh, David said to prepare a fabric which is, um, what is that, 26 by 30 centimeter? Is that correct? Am I... Yeah. Yes. Or 21? Uh, 26 by 30. Ah, 26 by 30. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tina saying, okay, let's add something to the Amazon cart. Okay, guys, yes, just a reminder, I'm going live again on my Amazon live tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so let's put that onto the cart. Oh, Margaret Ryan, you can get parts for most machines online. I had to replace a cropped bobbin. All right. That's my big sister. 
Hi, Margaret. Thanks for supporting David. Thank you for dropping by. Probably he's on. She is on your channel, right? Yeah, I think so. so. I'm pulling this up from David's channel. Yes, we're being we're paired right now. All right. Are we gonna sew along? Sure. Go ahead, Tina. Yeah. So that if you get stuck or you have questions, we can still ask David. All right. So guys, if you have prepared something. Okay, and um, you already have the fabric. It's 26 centimeter by 31 centimeter. And then four pieces 26 of... 26 by 30. Oh, sorry, by 30. I added. <laughs> yep. 26 by 30 centimeter. Four pieces of those. Okay. Okay. So, with my... Oh, let's get the right one. Figure this out. There we are. <laughs> So you're gonna need some pins. I forgot to mention you need pins. But hopefully everyone has pins. Oh, uh, pins. Okay, yes. Pins, guys. <laughs> if you have pins. This All right. So here's all right. Four pieces. This is my liner piece color and this is going to be the outside okay. of the bag so the liner piece is uh normally not the nicer one or if both are nice that's fine also right yeah i mean i i just i think it's just to really give a contrast you see that, that you know i picked a, a i picked a complementary color for the liner because you're not really going to see that but you know it's a nice little detail if you look inside oh i love you your pin cushion david yeah, I like skulls if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Because you, cause you love Halloween? <laughs> Not really, just skulls? Skulls, zombies, monsters. I like, I like <laughs> classic uh, movie monsters too. So what we're going to do is put these together with the on fabric know. there's a right side and a wrong side so this where the print is that's what we call the right side I'll okay. sit down so you can see me again um, and the, so we're gonna put the wrong, wrong sides together wrong sides together okay yeah uh, like a fabric like this probably doesn't really have a right or a wrong side because no print on it but uh, if it's a, just a solid color, that's... Mm -hmm. But if you're working with prints, make sure that they're facing each other. All right. So there, guys. So you put the inner liner and then the, the fabric that will be shown outside face together. The nice print yep. facing downwards. Yep. Or a what do you call it? The wrong side up? Wrong sides, wrong sides facing. Or it's wrong sides together. Okay, wrong sides together. There you go. Yep. And I'm just going to put a couple of pins across one edge. Make sure these line up right. <laughs> Again, David. Wrong side, meaning the one with the right print, uh, yep. is inside. It's the... It Exactly. So this is the right side. Okay, got see it. Now, now we see. Yeah. And All right. Like that. And uh, Heather is saying, right side, wrong side, light side, dark side. <laughs> yep. Exactly. I got confused there for a bit. Ready, get, set, so. Okay, that's uh, Tina. And <laughs> Margaret saying, hi, little brother. Thank you so much, Margaret, again for the support. Something All else right. to just uh, I'll give you a little. Uh, Point around when you're pin when you're pinning things, the direction of your needles actually is important because as you're sewing, you want to be able to pull the needles out. Uh huh. So if your needles like if I pinned it the other way, it's facing me. Yes. Yeah. If the points are, you want to keep the points away from you. Oh yeah, makes sense, machine, right? We don't want to. I'm get... trying to pull it out. It's gonna be it's gonna jam up against the foot. So you want to make sure that 
you always have the points away from you. So as you're sewing, you can pull them out and keep going. Because you, you don't want to risk sewing over your pins because you could break your needle. Great advice. So guys, I hope you got that. Okay, so there's a way of actually putting the, okay, the pins. Yeah, so, so like, for example, if I was sewing all the way around this, which uh -huh. I would keep pinning this way so that the points are always away from uh, Okay, me. so you pin them yeah. one side at a time, not like pin all of it together. Yeah. Okay. For, for this, I'll, I'll skip it. What we're going to do is we're just going to sew these edges first. All right. And then once that's done, we're going to open it up. We're going to press this with an iron or you can finger press it if you don't have your iron ready. Oh, um, yeah, the iron. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. iron. <laughs> Learn on the iron. I got to plug mine in, actually. Turn it on. Okay. So again, David, why do we need to iron it? Because you want to get the, the seams nice and flat. Okay. You'll see. Makes it crisp. So I'm sure everybody does have a an iron in the house okay. sorry i just fell over all right. let's see how that looks all right okay excited much well so the first thing we're going to do i can show you another little uh tool if some else I got. Uh, this is a magnetic seam guide. Wow. Magnetic seam guide. Okay, add to cart. Yeah. <laughs> magnetic seam guide. Should set up should set up affiliate account. <laughs> <laughs> you should, David, and then we'll all go there. Okay. So on, on, on the the plate on your machine here, you see oh. these little these grooves. These are these are actually seam markers. Oh yeah. I see them. In centimeters so I don't and in inch. I, I don't know what it is in metric, but they're like, it's quarter inch, five eighths inch. Oh, um, five eighths. Okay. So I yeah. put the edge of my fabric onto that one. Yeah. So depending on how, how thick of a seam you want to do, uh, usually most projects are like a, a five eighths inch mm -hmm. seam allowance. A seam allowance if Seam allowance means how much of the fabric is going to get taken up by the, the seam. So mm. the if you're doing something really small, like really with like a lot of um, close detail, then you want to make your seam allowance a little smaller. But for most most projects, they usually go by a, a five eighths. If it's a little bit bigger than a half. It's a I always get that mixed up, but it, that's kind of the standard. Most of your patterns will tell you uh, to do five eighths. Okay. Yeah, but it, it'll this little tool. Will, if you uh, line it up with that groove, it'll actually click into place. Oh, cool! And then, so then I can just use that like a fence. Oh, we want. I want that. <laughs> yeah. Can, They're not expensive, fit, like I said. Can it fit Amazon any or, sewing machine, David, or just a singer? It'll, it'll fit any. It'll fit any machine. It's magnetic, as long as, as, long as it has a metal uh, foot plate. Okay. Oh my! Yeah, it is metal. Okay. Yeah. So now let me check my. Okay, now guys, this is it. This is the sewing right, part. This is going to be our first, our first stitch of the day for for real. So here we go. Oh, let me see. Uh, I'm actually going to start a little bit in because what we're going to do is backstitch. There is a should have a lever on your machine for reverse. On mine, it's this bar. If you pull that down, the machine will actually stitch backwards. And then you stitch forward, and what that will do is it'll lock the stitch in place and make it really strong. Okay, so you. 
you press that I'm first, sorry. the backwards. Yeah, so this bar right it. here, I'll make it stitch backwards. And you should do a couple of stitches backwards and then just go forward. And as you're pulling your needles out, stick them back in your pin cushion so they don't fall over the floor and find their way into your foot. Been? Yep. Okay, Margaret saying that uh, she learned something new. Did not know about the magnetic uh, seam guide. There you go. David, cool. how far in do we need to uh, sew in? To so, like edge? I said, I did like um, the first, if you're looking at the on your machine, I was going by this first line. Um, so can we like go to the overhead? Probably. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, shoot. There nope, you go. That's not it. So how keep forgetting which button I push. To the edge of the there cloth. <laughs> do we sew? Let me uh, let me get a ruler here. Ati Margie, thank you still for uh, for watching. If my stitches are loose, is it because of tension? Yeah, you might want to bring your tension up a little bit. Okay, and then the higher the number, the tighter? Correct. All right, correct, Charles. So you better move it a little bit higher. So for this one, here's another, another little nifty thing I got from Madam So. They had a sale. Wow. <laughs> this is a, actually a thread. This is a seam. Uh, it's like a little seam ruler. So oh. you actually use this. Yeah. So it gives you like the different. Of course, it's in inches. Um, okay. So it will tell you, you where got, to start. Where to do you guys start. work? Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you work? Are you uh, metric where you are or do you use um, imperial? Um, we use both. We use we both. English and metric. For crafting, we normally use the, you know, inches. Yeah. Yes. So the, what I have here, the first line is really a, it's like a three quarter inch. So you can use this right. tool. You bring your needle down. Hang on. So if you put your needle down and just put this up against the needle, it'll tell you where the, uh, you can see that. Will it not be? really good visual to where your seam allowances are, so you can change depending on which side. So that's like the five, five eighths right here. That's typical for most of your sewing patterns you get like in the stores for making clothes, because it uh -huh. gives you enough room. Um, but for this, I'm, I'm going a little smaller, so we're using like the more of a half inch. So you, with, you put this down, and you can take your magnetic guide. The magnetic guide is still there. Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah. That's actually, I had it on this. Let me see where that. If you don't have that amazing tool, guys, you can use your ruler. Yeah, or just yes. and it, really, it's this is kind of a cheat, you know. You can just if you just uh, take it slow and just keep your eye on that edge. You get a it'll, it should machine should do you know most of the work for you anyway. Okay. Yeah. So just one side first, David. And then yep. did you lock it already? We need to lock the 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 stitch or the seam before we let go. Yeah, so you just want if you do a little front little backward stitch, 
Oh, it was a backwards stitch. Yeah, so you start a, start a little bit into the fabric, run it backwards for a couple of stitches, and then run forward to lock that stitch into place. All right. Okay, and then we move it out and then start with the new the, uh, the other one. Yeah, so we're going to go to the second panel. Uh-oh, I got a tangled up bobbin. Alert, 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 what happened? Oh, no. <laughs> OMG. For, just, I, I can't see my Facebook for some reason. My, uh, it, my, uh, I'm using this, the little computer I have over here just, uh, kicked me off everything for some reason, so. Uh-oh. Windows decided to run an update. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Great timing. All right, so I do the same thing on the other fabric, right, David? Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. So guys, again, for those coming in just now, we are creating a pouch bag. Okay, we fin Ah, oh, there. So again, going to put it in reverse and then go for it. So do a little bit of reverse. Oh. Thread out of the needle. <laughs> I need to thread. Hey guys, how are you doing? So, I just happen to have a little miniature ironing board, but you can use a, uh, if you don't have something like this, just a, you can put a towel, like a, on your table and use it as an ironing board as well. Yeah, we actually have that mini one as well. For now, but again, if you don't have it, guys, you can use just a towel, David is saying. Or if you have like uh, the ironing, what do you call that? Platform, base? Ironing board. Yes, there you go. Ironing board. With you, beside you, then you can actually do so. Okay, come on, come on, come on, Lala. I need to learn how to do that automatic threading thing. Put that heat up for a second. Let's do what David said. Backward. And then forward. Forgetting where I put that. Whoop. Still. There we are. Okay. Okay. So. But why is mine? My seam is so big. <laughs> I don't think this is five eighths. I think this is more. And That's okay. my it's... bobbin keeps on getting tangled up, David. What is wrong? Hmm. Might need to rethread it again. Okay, uh, re, re, re thread. Yeah, pull, pull, like just thread the whole machine over again. Oh, come on, come on, come on. All right, so next up, I'm going to move on a little bit. I'm just going to press this seam flat. So we're going to. Oh. So that's where you need to, OK, 
Okay. So, you fold on the seam side. Yeah. So, I just spread these apart and then just press it so I get that nice flat. Okay. I will put it. So you need to iron it flat, like so. Open it. Yep. Open. Open. Yep. Open it like uh, open apart and pull yeah, them so apart. Spread... Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm not really in camera there. Yeah. So we're gonna open this seam so that fold it out like that. Oh, okay. But first, you yeah. um, iron it both on one side first. I'm just right now. I'm just doing the seam here, and then I'm gonna smooth out the rest of it too. Okay, so guys, sorry, I can't. I'm not looking at the chat right now. I'm trying to iron my my work <laughs> first. I'll be back. I'm just iron this out first. What if uh, my seam is like, I think this is more than 5 eighths, David. That's fine. That's okay. I, my pouch might be a little bit smaller then. Yeah, as long as, long as yeah, it'll, it'll end up being a hair smaller, but as long as your seams are, seams are even, it's fine. All right, so I've ironed that in. So I the same to the other one, right? Yep. Okay, where's the other one? There. Wow, so David has it already opened. Okay. okay. Super Poop is saying, don't forget to check out Dave's YouTube channel, Spooling Around. And put down the link, my sewing machine and I are not friends. I was able to sew it two sides, but now it's so properly. Yay! But now it, it so properly or it will not so batch made. We'll replay next time from the start. Yes, Miss Christine, thanks for dropping by. Mommy Uni. Huijaya, thanks for dropping by Po. Hi Marie. Hi Christine. Hello, Mom, Mommy Uni. Hey, from Tina. Okay. I will just continue. Ironing. All right. Okay, I'm almost done ironing. Hold on, David. <laughs> I just need to open. Gosh, I hope I make this right. Okay, let's open it up. Anyway, I prepared like five. I. I cut apart like five uh, fabrics. Okay. Or five projects in case I mess up the first one. I'll try <laughs> again. Yeah, it's always good to have a backup. Right? <laughs> if at five tries I don't make it, <laughs> I don't know if I ever will. No, 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 just kidding. I can get this. All right, you, so you're gonna done. Get All right. So moving on, now we're going to, we're actually going to make. We're gonna mark this each corner. I'm gonna cut Ooh, out a little. Oh, that ruler! I I've seen that. I think I have that. But where is yeah. it? Yeah, I have a I have a bunch of these different things. This is like a so you want to mark curves, like it'll do uh, shoulder seams. Oh. It's got you can see there's got like a grid. This is also in metric. Um. Okay. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna mark little four centimeter squares in each corner. Oh, that's where you're supposed to use that one. Yeah. The marking, what do you call it? This is a tailor's chalk, uh, or tailor's if you have a uh, marking pen. Again, four inch. 
four centimeters. Oh, centimeters. Okay. Yeah. Where is my ruler with a centimeter? There you go. Four centimeter, four centimeter. On all sides? Are you... Yeah. Did you... I'm gonna, oh, I'm it's gonna still on the wrong side, mark. right? Wrong side of the fabric. The wrong side. Okay. On all four corners? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I pulled out my bobbin. Hold on. Four centimeters. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. I'm going to get the both uh, panels that we sewed together. Four by one, two, three, four. Four by four. There you go. Okay, so on all four sides. Four. And then four again. Four by four. How are you doing, guys? David, what happens if I this is not straight? <laughs> um, doesn't have to be perfect. Fabrics, right? On both fabrics. Yep. On the wrong side. Okay. Four by four. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Four by four. There you go. So we go to the other side. Four by four. Okay, are you done, David? Yep. You're just waiting for so now. Us. We're just gonna cut, get your scissors, and we're just gonna cut those squares out of the corners. Oh, okay. So it's gonna look like that. Okay. And then this point. Okay. And get them out. Okay, cut yep. them out. Okay. Did I measure that right? That one looks wrong. All right. I hope I got this like all the same sizes. <laughs> Otherwise. Oh, I almost made a mistake. <laughs> okay. So, so far they look like almost the same. Okay. And then we have... Okay, Marie saying I was able to sew the two sides of my pouch, but now it won't sew properly batch made. Oh no! The tension, Marie. I'm not sure why I really have loops at the back of my stitch. Oh, David. Yeah. Shailene is having loops at the back of her stitch, of her you fabric. Might need to... What could she that's, do? That's a. 
Which, uh, who, I'm sorry, who is having that? Charlene, the one with the... Charlene, oh, that's, she's the one that with the old like machine. A, that's a, that sounds like a tension issue. Um, I would try first bring up the tension a little bit, and if that doesn't work, bring it down. But you might need to rethread the machine too if something's, something's a little off. Okay, teen, uh, Charles, I, ano daw, adjust the tension slowly. Make it tighter, make it loose slowly. And then, what's the other one, David? Rethread? Yeah. Just, yeah, just try, just try rethreading it. Sometimes, sometimes rethreading just fixes that. I, I, you know. Okay. So now that we've cut apart all the, oh gosh, yeah. that's just one. We have to do it on the both. <laughs> yeah, they're both. So they're gonna look exactly the same. Okay. I think I will just copy this one. <laughs> Is that possible? Yep. All right. So let's put them together. Like so. I hope this is right. Anyway, Roy is saying uh, life nor crafts are ever perfect. Absolutely. Nope. <laughs> there you go. I don't know why I've sewn the three sides of the fabric and the liner. Seam Reaper to the rescue. <laughs> Seam Ripper to the rescue, yep. <laughs> Absolutely, Tina. All right, hold on. Okay, so this is okay, what it's supposed to look like. How is it supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like that, like that. It's supposed to look like this. So now you have your panels. We're gonna put them wrong sides. I'm oh, sorry, right sides together, like that. Again, everything should, in theory, line up. Okay, hold on, hold on, David, hold on. Yep. I don't want to miss this. I will just okay. cut apart that other fabric's side. Just give me a few, like a minute or so. Okay, okay. maybe you just want to give reminders first <laughs> to those who are doing this as well. Yeah, check. OMG! I, I cut the one with the... <laughs> David! What happened? I cut the one with the... The one with the instead of cutting the sides, I cut the one that I seam together. <laughs> Can oh I see? No, I don't want to show you. <laughs> I'll just. Oh, no. <laughs> it's super. Okay, I don't want to say the word. Anyways, I will just that one. I don't know how to repair, but we'll just figure it out later. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, hold on. I'm almost almost there. Cutting the other side right now. Yeah. So it'll look like this when you're done. So it'll have like this little all the corners cut out. Like that. Okay. So and then you said that we should open it up. Okay. Yep. And when we yep. open it up. Okay, so we Okay, so ah, okay. So now we're gonna put the panels together. Put the panels together. With the the right sides facing together, the wrong sides up. So it'll look like that. The the Easy right point. sides facing each other. Correct. Okay, so but, mine but facing us is so. the wrong side still. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, and then what do we do yep. now? Now we're going to pin these together. Okay, so pin those together. Both ends? Yeah, so we're just going to go all the way around. Where did 
need to pin that. I forgot one step. I'm sorry. <laughs> Back up. Back up? Okay. Yep, I forgot one thing. Okay. On our... Out, this is our outside. We're going to take our ruler again. And measure... What like do you call that ruler cents. again, David? I think we should buy that ruler. What's that? That ruler you're oh, using? This, uh, I've had this for a long time. I think I got this on Wish, like, years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Took forever to get. <laughs> so, But you can find these at, like, any of your fabric supply stores, your big box places. Should Even, like, Walmart or Joanne Fabrics will have these, or something mm -hmm. like it. All right. But we're going to measure... Two and a half centimeters down. I'm gonna make a mark there. Press a little higher. And then from that mark down, we're gonna go another two centimeters and make another mark here. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side of this. It's two and a half first and then two centimeters? Yes. Two and a half and then two. Okay. Okay. So that's the long side, right? From the long side. Yeah. So just on just on this, uh, the what's going to be the outside, the outer part of the bag. I'm going to do that on the other side of this panel as well. And you can just, uh, if you just line the edges up, you can just transfer your marks. Okay, okay, okay. Because okay. this, this is where our drawstring is going to go in. Now we're going to go back to our machine. And this time we're actually going to set it up. Sorry, David, the, up the two is from the top of that, uh, that cutting yeah. part? Yeah, so like, you see, the two and a half, and then the space will be two centimeters. This is these marks. Can you see that? It's hard, it's hard to tell. I can't see in the camera. If you can see that. It's very faint. But... Okay. Ah, it's on the notch. Yeah. It's on the top of the notch. Or is it yeah, on so... the long... Can we see the fabric? Uh, lying the... Ah. Okay, it's on the long you know side. What? You know what? I did that wrong. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Whew, it's a good thing I haven't cut it. Okay, okay. Our... Yeah, no cut. there's nothing to cut. But uh, let's... I forgot to do it from. It's got to be from this. This is the top of the bag. My mistake. Right. So the <laughs> Let's top try of that the again. Bag. Top of the bag. Okay. Top of the bag. Yeah. So you measure down from that that seam. I actually meant to do this before we stitch these panels together, but it's okay. is starting to fall apart here. Yeah. Now we got it. Also from the middle. From the middle. So you're going to have down, down, like... So David, it has to be from the middle where we stitched. Yeah, this is this is actually going to be the top of the bag, so the the drawstring is going to go on. on the root. What's going to happen is we're going to leave this open and we're going to create a channel that the drawstring will go through. Okay. But, okay. 
but I forgot to do that first before I got ahead of myself when stitching the uh, the panels together. <laughs> but it is not too late. Okay. Let's see my marks. All right. So now that we have our marks in the right place, we are now going to set up our machine to do a zigzag stitch. Zigzag. Yeah. Okay, so you did it only on one side, right? On yeah, the just the uh, so both of these, but just the, just on this part. We don't need to do it on the lining. It's just it's just for the the outside of the bag. But the both both sides. Yeah. Bo so here, here, and here. Okay. Okay, and it's two from the edge or from the seam between the two. Yeah, so two, yeah, two, two centimeter, and then two centimeters. So two and two because we already used up some of the seam allowance. From the edge. Yeah, so from here to here two, and then okay. from here to there two. Okay, got it. Okay. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be part like you know perfectly measured, but as long as they're even on both sides, the you'll same. see. You'll see when we get. Why, what this is for. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And right. then two. And then mm -hmm. two. Okay. Two from here. Okay. I'm grab a have a little tea. All right. So grab your tea first, David, and maybe yeah. just look at the chat <laughs> while I try to maneuver this one. <laughs> one, two. Three. And then five. Okay, and then the other side. How about you guys? Okay, how are you guys yeah. doing? I'll just... Looking at my uh, my Facebook feed, like my wife Deirdre was watching. She said it's out of focus. Thanks, son. I, I, oh. anyway. <laughs> Is it? I Hello. She says, uh, hi, Lala, John, and Dave. Matt Haas Hi, hi, says, thanks for, for joining awesome? us so early in the morning. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what do we do now? All right, so we're going to go to our back to our machine. Okay. So, let's see, that one, nope. That's the one, I, nope. I'll just get this mixed up. There we go. So, for, for my machine to do zigzag, I'm going to turn this knob on the side to the letter B for, I think for your machine, it's probably just the touch of a button, right? Okay. So we do the zigzag, but there are many zigzags. Yeah, we're going to do, which, gonna do a little which, zigzag. What, what zigzag. this is going to do is we're just going to go right over the edge and that'll keep the fabric from fraying. It's something you won't even see, but it's just a little, little reinforcement on the, on just in those notches that we made. I'm going to set my zigzag to like, uh, I'm guessing it's three. We'll take a piece of test fabric. I don't need this. David, the one that goes like, uh, the icon is like a zig, uh, a stitch that goes like down. Yeah, it looks like is a Is that like the a lightning tension? Bolt? What is that one for? Yeah. So th this one. Okay, so normally tension would be what? Three point? Um, yeah, keep your tension around a, a three or a four. Okay. Okay. 
So now this, we are gonna... going to sew together. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is in the, you can see the foot. Okay. Foot. There's a center line. Let me see if I can push in a little further. In the foot, there's like this little, where the thread goes through. Uh-huh. You're actually going to line up your fabric just just to the right of that. It's going to be really close to the edge. Just to the right of that one. Okay. Yeah. And just do a couple of turns with your machine to see if it's going to... You want to catch just the edge of the fabric, and then it'll move over to, like, inside the fabric, like that. Can you see that? So I'm just doing a couple of stitches. Just, this is just on my practice piece. Oh, okay. So practice first. Okay. Yeah. Take it on a scrap just to test it. But you see how that just sort of catches the edge of the fabric? Oh, I'm doing the oh. cross already. I mean, the, what's this one? The zigzag. So what this will do is this will keep this from fraying as you, if you when you, it's going to create a little channel where the draws, where the string's going to go through, but this will keep the fabric from coming apart inside. Just a little extra reinforcement. How about the stitch length, David? Uh, keep it about the same. Three? Yeah, keep it like a two or a three. Two or a three. Two point three. Okay. Okay. Whew. All right. So. So scared. We're going to do our actual. So then you want to take your, line up with your mark that we did on the fabric. Let's drop that down. And I'm just going to slowly. Okay. Where are you starting from, David? From the middle of the seam? Towards yeah. So here, here's the, the mark. So down here, this from the, this is the top mark. I'm just going to go from the little bit above the top mark, it, top mark past the, the bottom mark. So we're just going to reinforce that edge. Ah, so we're not folding anything, just... No, this, okay. is, this is just to keep the fabric from coming apart later on. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to do a little back stitch. And that's it. Uh, so how many stitches did you do? This is the zigzag, right? Yes, the zigzag. Come on, Lala, you can do this. You can do this. <laughs> you can do it. So you, you'll end up with something that looks like that. Okay. And then we'll clean up our th extra threads. And I'll, I have to do that also on the other. Yeah, we're going to do it on all four sides of the front facing panel. Okay, also so the from the side, seam, can... right? Yeah. So just, just between those two marks. So for the other side, you can flip it around the other way and start at the bottom. You're just going to go from here to here. Oh, it's okay to flip it on the right side? Yeah. That, way, that way, you're not bunched up inside the machine. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. this gets hidden later on? Yeah, it's gonna. this is all going to disappear, but it's, this, this will keep just make it a little bit uh, more durable. Good luck to me. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, you know, a lot of people think sewing is really dainty and, you know, there's, there's a lot of swearing and... and... <laughs> there you go. So. <laughs> and, you know, sh we're dealing with sharp things. I don't know why people think it's so, uh, you know... 
I, I don't know why, why more guys don't know how to sew or, or you know I don't know because, because for us it's like yeah, we have to take this for girls we call it like home economics when we're yeah yes so we're required but I just don't know why. I now I remember it was my mom who did my projects for me, so I never learned how to actually use the sewing machine. Yeah, I don't know what was you know I don't know what was the thing that made it so interesting to me, but um, <laughs> maybe being able to create something right now. That's why I like yeah. it because I can actually you know whatever I have in mind I can create hopefully <laughs> yeah it's, and you're making something that you know is like art but it's also functional you know mm -hmm. ah, there you go functional i mean i'm working on one of the projects that i have in line uh, i'm making a bag for my roller blades so that, that's one of the videos that i'm, I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks and uh that's that's been it's it's been a little bit of a journey. <laughs> That's nice. So we're going to be looking forward to that. And this is the side where I actually cut it apart. I'll show you later. <laughs> yeah. What I actually tried to do a shortcut ended up being a disaster. But I'll just find a way how I can fix that up later on. Okay. Yep. There's always, you can always fix it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Or I can always start a new. Okay, there you go. All right, done. All right, I still got to do my last one. Oh no, not done. Just done on the first one. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm done on the both. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. This is epic, guys. This will be my first. <laughs> I don't know how, how nice a finish I would actually be able to make out of this, but we'll see. Hi, Mitch. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> They're saying, I don't know. Okay, uh, Lala is buying time. Indeed. <laughs> Ulit mo, Miss Lala. Sorry. <laughs> Try yep, to adjust the tension. So tired. <laughs> Got it? S-E-W, tired? I'm building a strong friendship with the Ripper. That's <laughs> Tina. KMDG mode lang po. Good evening. Still on data mode. No internet. Oh, sorry to hear that, Sis KM. Still letting it rip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. It's okay, Mitch. All right. Hello, Miss Tina, Mitch. There you go. Hi, everyone. But never with the machine. Same here, Mitch. That's why we're trying to learn from David. We're actually doing now a, a project. Okay. All right. So. so okay, there six. you go. Nope. I never get this right. There we go. Okay. All right, we see it clearly. Let's set up for stamp. So, we're going to line these up now. Let's go by my center theme. And now we're putting our panels together. It's more important to get the center seam lined up more than these edges. We can always adjust those. Oh, okay. So again, yeah. how are you lining those up? Um, so both sides this, together. Okay. Oh. So good sides together. I almost made a mistake. I hit this one down. Okay. So now, yep, that's better. Okay. So right sides down up. together. Yep. Facing right sides together. together. All right, and then. So now we're gonna pin this. Come on, Lala, you can do this. Come on, guys, we need a, we need a cheer from the from the from the chat. 
Say, we can do this, we can do this, guys, we can do this. All right, okay. So where are you putting the pins on the side? Okay. On just the edges. Okay. So remember, pin direction, because we're going to be sewing this way. You want the pins pointing towards the machine. So it's better to have the seams together correctly. Yes. The, this is because this is gonna be the top. Okay, the sides you can yeah, make sure these are lined up. Always adjust. Okay. Okay, now we put okay. How are you doing, Tina, Charlene? In the chat, how are you guys doing? All right. Oh, where did you put the stitch, uh, the the pins, David? Oh, sorry. Oh, just there, on, the... on this side. Yeah. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Hang on one second. Wrong sorry. pins, Lala. This is going to be a line. very small pouch at the end. <laughs> yeah. Whatever is left. Because can... I made a lot of mistakes, so. Then a little smaller, that's fine. You know, I think the reason why I made a lot of mistakes is because of the measurement. I don't have that that uh, ruler. Okay. I think I had a hard time with the ruler that I have. Oh, okay. So you're putting it all around, the pins, actually. Yeah, we're going to go all the way around. All the way around, okay. So I pin this in a way that, so as we're going to go through the machine, it's going to go this way, uh -huh. and then like that. So the pins are always facing away from us. Okay. So it doesn't matter if the edges now don't, exactly like are flush together does it matter yeah no we can we can uh like i said just make sure that you catch both seams like for this one i didn't cut this square perfectly so i'm gonna actually trim this oh, okay yeah so the that's, corners that's don't have to be aligned but you just have to make sure that you catch your fabric because we're only we're actually only doing this you'll see in a second but basically we're making a what's called a, a boxed corner so we're just gonna first we're just gonna stitch along these edges uh-huh and then i go like that well, and then i go like this you don't have to, you, i'm not asking you to go like in like that because that's that's a little you'll see this is actually really easy so we're just gonna we're just gonna sew these edges and when we get to our our zigzag, we're actually going to stop here, backstitch, and then skip over that so that this stays open. And then we're going to stitch this Oh, because that's where we're going to put our cord or ribbon. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, so when we get this all together. Well, I got it things... in theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things we need the to do is to take a little thing mark. Is a different thing. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do one more thing just to make a mark. Doesn't have to be oh, perfectly mark. measured, but just like leave a little mark at the bottom on your bottom in the liner. Because we're going to leave this open to turn it inside out. Mm, okay. We need a little little hole to get the whole thing flipped around. But so that part I don't sew. Right. So we're just going to leave a little. Just leave a little gap. All right. That's at least big enough to get a couple fingers into it. All right, got it. Whew. Okay. Ouch. Is it okay, David, that the sides, let's say, um, on the corner where the 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 nice fabric is, um, they're mm -hmm. aligned. The corners are aligned, and then. 
but if I put like all of them together, they're not aligned. So it's just that the two liners aligned and then the good fabric aligned or all corners should be aligned. No, just as long as these these are close and then the other side is close because we're going to... Okay, okay. So then... What's going to happen is we're going to turn the side up and then fold the liner inside. So if, especially if your liner isn't perfect, no one will ever see it. So... <laughs> Yeah, you're right. This is anyway going to be inside, right? So why worry much? Well, there's, a, got it. there's a lot of forgiveness in sewing. Sometimes there's not, but sometimes there is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it's my first time, guys, right? So, yep, exactly. So There you go. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to use my... Let's see. Let's put this up. All right, David. Make sure. Okay. I put my... So now we're going to put our machines. This is important. Put our machines back to straight stitch. Okay. Where do we start? Hold on. What part of? Okay. Good. Sa... Okay. That one. Yeah. And then onto this one. Okay. So we'll start with that one. Okay. What stitch? We want... We're using a straight stitch again. Oh, straight. Okay, goes to straight yeah. for... Uh, Just like you had it before. Okay. Go back to that one. Okay. Let's check my focus again. Okay. All right, so... Trying to focus. Oops, sorry. He is doing Toblerone. Still having problems there with the tension. You know what? I would maybe try a different needle. Oh, oh, okay. Charles, try a different needle now, sis. Sometimes your needle uh, might be... It, it, you can't see it, but it might be ever so slightly bent or it's maybe a little worn out. But just try changing the needle and see if that makes mm. a difference. Okay, okay. All right. Let's see, was this six? There we go. There I am. So now I'm going to throw in my little magnetic guide again. Oh, how you wish we have your guide. <laughs> I didn't... I, sh I should start an affiliate link, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Hold on, David. You are... Where are you starting from? The seam? The middle of the seam? So we're going to start on the side. This is like the... Let me uh, let's go to... Let me see. Let me see. Nope. So I'm starting... You know, just, we're just going to go straight down. Okay. Um, this is this side. the part where we have the edge, the top... Uh, we call that we're just that. doing a straight remember there's we're a part a there that stitch. we did uh zigzag no zigzag it's a straight stitch we're done with the zigzag oh yeah but this is um before this before the mid the yeah seam. so we're gonna we're gonna go from here to there and, and then, we're just gonna back stitch a little bit and then okay. just gonna skip over like lift it up and then move the needle back to the side and then keep going ah so that it will be open yeah, so it'll stay open. Okay, I got it. Okay, makes sense now. Great. Right. Okay. This is it, Pansit. I'm going to start in, start in a little bit. Okay. Like, like a half inch below the top. Okay. I'm going to hit reverse. Reverse. And then go forward. Careful not to stitch over my pins. Oh, oh, oh. No, no thread. Oh, no, my thread broke. I'm trying to go a little slow for you. It's like, like. All right, so we're going to stop here. And then I'm going to back stitch a little bit. Go forward okay, just a little bit. That part. And then I'm going to lift this up. All right. And we're just going to move past that. And I stuck myself with a pin. That hurt. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, I did that to myself a while back. So when you get to this seam, what you want to do is just press this just to get it to lay flat. Try to make sure that that stays open underneath. Like here, I, I didn't quite get that under there. I want to get this so that the steam stay open. It just make, makes it just a little neater, a little flatter. And slowly sew over the seam. Keep going. Okay, why is my sewing machine um, like moving so ever so slowly? Your machine's moving slow? Yeah, even if I press on the... What do you call that? The pedal? So, ow, oh, maybe it's in the one. Is there, is there a variable I got it. speed There's control? The speed. Okay, I got it, I think. <laughs> All right, this is it. Some, does your machine have a have variable speed? Because sometimes it'll, it'll you can actually make it run slow on purpose. Yeah, I think it was on the one. That's why. Okay, now it's, okay. it's moving faster. There, better. Here you go. You can hear it, right? And I will just have to stop when I reach that part where I did the. Uh... Okay, and then go back, right? Back. Couple little back stitches. And then up. I do not cut the thread, right? I don't. No, you don't have to cut the thread. We can do we can actually clean that up later. Just keep okay. going. And then I, I go in to the end of the seam. Yeah, go to the end of just like skip over to the end of that and then keep sewing. And keep on sewing. No need to do at the back stitch, right? No? No. Um do a little back stitch on the on the beginning of that stitch too. Just, just to make it as strong right. as you can make it. Moving. Okay, where do I stop, David? At what point do I stop? All right, so we're going to get all the way to the end of this corner. Ah, okay. And then uh, do a little back around. push there. Ah, okay. And then you move back again. Yep. And then you can cut this or just keep going because we're going to then stitch... I went over it. It's okay. Anyway, I did the back that's stitch. Okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll be alright because we're gonna close that up anyway. It's not that's not as as crucial. Okay, so I go out and start again. So then we're gonna start just start on this flat. Um, so we went to here. Then we're just gonna go stitch here, to the, and then skip to this. Skip over that. So just leave a little bit of an opening. All right, got and it. And then, and then. So we're not sewing this corner yet. Oh yeah. So we're skipping the corners. Yeah, we're skipping the corners. We're just doing the straight lines across. Okay. Where are you going to start from the edge of? That yeah, start one? from the edge. Like, yep. Okay. Like, come in. Tina, where are you now? She's doing tobler. What she said. She's eating. Oh no. So I'm going to back up a little bit, get right to the edge there, and then start again. Okay. So you started I, exactly like, at the end of that one, right? I come in a little bit and then back back, back out to it and the start up again, but I think I'm having an issue now. Okay. All right. It just made a little clicking sound that I didn't like. Yep. So I've got, I've got a tension issue now. Oh, my thread out again. Yep. Make sure when you're, is it, is it like coming out of the needle? Yes. Yeah, so make sure you have enough of a tail. Like you want to pull, like pull it back whenever you start a new thread. So you have at least a couple, yeah, I think um, that was like too three or four short. inches. Yeah. But you can see I got, I got a little pulling and bird's nest thing on mine. I'm not sure why that happened, but that's a mess. That's it. Woohoo. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. Go in. Rip that seam out. Here you go. All right. This is it. Pants it. That's it. Pants it. <laughs> yes. We call that, you know, it because it rhymes. So I like saying, this is it. Pants it. Hmm. Remember, you've heard me many times say that in Lida. Yep. Now I want pants it. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. Okay, and then after going back, skip that 
thing? Yep. Yep. Okay. I and gotta, then move the I gotta see what's going on with my machine now. Why that's pulling. It does this every once in a while. Okay, and then I have to move back a bit. Okay. Make it make it uh, okay longer because I... Okay, we can, we can do this, Lala. Go, 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 go. All right, that that seems to work again. I don't know why it does that every once in a while. Okay, to the end again, David. Yeah, so you're just All gonna right. I'm gonna do in my uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit and then to there about. I'm just gonna lift my foot up. All right, and then I continue on with the other side. Yep. And then this side, I close, right? It's like just go straight, straight, straight. Straight until you get to that other, uh, so you get to your other, um, stitch, your other zigzag thing. Oh, yeah. All right, and then I skip. Okay, got it. Yep. How about you guys? Where are you now? Okay, okay, okay. Forward, back, forward. So now I'm getting to this again. I want to make sure these seams stay flat under there. Get get under there. Come on. <laughs> okay, until I reach that sim. Yeah. And then what? Uh, right okay, and then forward and then up. Okay. And then I'm also going to cheer my machine up because it's not cooperating. All right. Oops. All right, David. So yeah. when I reach that other side, where do I go next? So we go the other we side, the last. Side. Uh, let, me get, let me catch up. I'm almost there. The last edge. All right. So we're done. Do I do the last edge? Yeah, so we're gonna end up with all stitch here, here to there to there. Uh huh. Gonna clip that thread. How about the other side? Um, yeah, I think yeah, I should, I should stitch this. Yeah, so you're gonna go all the way around. Okay, Charlene is giving up. <laughs> oh, no. Because hers is uh, actually quite an old machine, so. Yeah. Maybe there really needs to be like a maintenance of sort. Yeah, but maybe we tried. Have, uh, make... important thing we tried to Charlene. Yeah. Okay, now guys, wait, wait if I will be able to finish this. All right, David, so I'm we're, done we're sewing now. all everything. Okay. I've done everything. Okay, let me see. Okay, except for that part. So now the op only openings are the one where we did a skip on one end. And then all the four yep. corners are open still. Yep, so these corners right here, those, those, those two spots. Yes. 
So what we're going to do now is turn this whole thing inside out. All right. Turn it around. Turn it inside out. Oh, I hope this thing doesn't collapse on me. <laughs> Don't fall apart, guys. Come on, come on. Do I hear people cheer? The needle is... Ah, the needle is a bit bent. You don't have extra needle, Charles? Yes. Charles. Alright, Mitch is saying cheer mode. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can do it, you can do it. Thank you, guys. Hi, again. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. We gotta turn it right back around. Don't don't, don't turn it inside out yet if you hadn't yet. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Turning it back again. I forgot one step. I, I got ahead of myself again. Okay, okay, okay. I don't have instructions written in front of me. It's like... <laughs> doing it. All right, so everybody's cheering us so up. Excited. Thank you guys for the cheer. All right, David. Okay, so what's now? All right, so make sure it's... Well, it's still inside out. Mm -hmm. Forgot to do the corners because that's that's the next step. And this is this is where it gets exciting. Oh, no. <laughs> is it this enough? I think I've had excitement for a day. <laughs> All right. So okay. what you're going to do is take these corners... And All we're right. gonna pull pull them open so that these seams line up. Can you see what I'm doing there? Yes, like, yes. All right, and then we're just gonna stick a pin in that. Oh, this is uh, it's like mitering the corners. Exactly. There you go. All right. Okay, stuck a pin there. And do the same thing on the other side, I suppose? Yep. All four corners, yep. All right. So only on this side, right? Or all oh, all four? Yeah, all four of them. Basically, we're making two bags that fit, you know, that are connected. So they're one inside the other. Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, lesson learned here, the most important thing that I think, that's the reason if ever this project is not going to be so perfect, is because of the measurements. I think because I of what? messed up my measurements, David. <laughs> oh, okay. Otherwise, right. I think uh, it'll well, be okay. Yeah, I mean, the nice it's thing about a project like this is it doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle or you know yes make it... and of course it's a basic class i mean it's a basic yeah. uh i don't know so we're sure we'll make mistakes and that's fine just like what john said earlier on i mean roy <laughs> so yeah it was roy who said what, you, you know, know sewing is like life <laughs> it's like crafting it's not perfect I would tell people when they uh, they say you know like when I when they find out they know how to sew they say what do you make I said mistakes mostly exactly <laughs> but once you see the actual result right so how far away from the edge am I supposed to or just the same yeah we're gonna do the same size seam just make sure it's flat all right so. okay so so away. Sewing, sewing away. Okay. So go back in a little bit. So pins are go the wrong way. In. I'll turn these pins okay. around. And we're just going to go over, just sort of press that flat. And we're just going to drop this. Another straight stitch across those. Uh, Guys, are you excited? What do you think in the chat? Can Mommy Guide actually do this? Can Mommy Lara finish this? What do you think, guys? What is your prediction? And I just <laughs> you've you've got heard my reaction. <laughs> How about you, David? What do you think? Will I be I think able to it. make this? Yep, I think you'll do it. Yeah. David has such a belief in my abilities for sewing. <laughs> Let's see. You don't know what you're capable of until you do it. Exactly. So I'm going to surprise all of you guys in a bit. And 
and you'll All just right. get the Let's seat. Let's see if my machine will cooperate now. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we have tech issue, and then we have machine issues, right, David? Yeah. Okay. So guys, if you have not yet subscribed to David, uh, the link is in the chat and also there. It's spooling around and we also put the link on the descriptions. So please head on over to his channel while you're waiting for us to finish. And, you know, head on and uh, please do subscribe. So that uh, yeah. when David uploads new projects, process videos or even goes live you get notified immediately yep i need i need motivation so so please go over there and, yeah know. so we asked david david <laughs> when are you gonna upload the next video there you go yep David has a really, really uh, taxing day job, right? So making film takes a long and editing. <laughs> that's a very that's the hardest part, right, David? The editing part takes yep. hours and hours and hours. Okay, so what do I do now? Step on it. Go back. Step on it. Oops. Got it. Oops. Oh no, snap. I knew it. I didn't pull enough thread. I'm almost done sewing all the four corners. You're done? Not yet. Almost. Just one more. Oh. The thread got tangled up again. Not really tangled, yeah. but it got removed again, so... Oh, I think my mom is smiling in heaven. Because she says, finally, you learn how to sew. <laughs> yes, mom, this is for you. Oh, my... Cousin Sarah is watching on Facebook. She says, hi, David. Oh, hi, Sarah. Sarah McDonald or Sarah Steele? Sarah Lynn Hopkins Haney. <laughs> so my, she's on my Facebook page. Hello, hello. Okay, so once I've done with all of those, now I turn it around. Now we're going to turn it inside out. Okay, but probably I need so to remove all this extra threads. <laughs> yeah. There's so much of them. Yep, just do a little cleanup. Again, a lot of this stuff is going to disappear inside the bag, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think I see this. <laughs> so, it's okay. All right, so pulling them. Okay, this is it, guys. This is the point of no return. Let's see. Oh, there, my daughter's actually beside me, trying to see if mommy did. Uh, <laughs> is it, is it a win? <laughs> An almost win? How can you tell if it's a win? We'll see. If it looks like a bag. <laughs> oh, there's the. Oh, yeah, no. I cut that apart by accident. So All we're right. gonna hide it. <laughs> I'm gonna show it. Remember, I was like mitering the edges, and then I remembered. Oh, not from the the seam, the edge. So there's a bit of a hole there. I'm just gonna sew that together later on. All right, then you're gonna you wanna reach in there and just pop out all your corners. <laughs> so they look oh. like that. Now, on your bottom, in your lining seam, you're gonna have this this gap that we left. Um, you can either hand stitch this or machine stitch it. Ah, uh, all right. So since we're here, let's gonna... machine stitch it. <laughs> yep, uh, I prefer machine stitching. So this you want to, you want to, you don't have to make it a real deep seam, just just enough to close that up. So I'll go like okay. I'm going to use just the edge of my uh, presser foot as a guide. All right. 
the one lala. And we're just gonna go do this. Back up a little bit. And then back that up. We can do this. Go. Forward, forward. Clean up these little. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, back, back, back. Forward. Ah! Alright, so let's. Okay, it's close. Nice and close. Okay, and then put it inside. Yep, now we're gonna flip it around inside. And we're gonna heat up our iron again because we need to we need to press this one more time. Ah <laughs> guys, you will love this. <laughs> oh, four. Oops. Sorry, I smacked my microphone. So it's starting to look like a bag, right? <laughs> yes, in fairness. <laughs> It does look so like you can a bag. See on the sides, you get, there's this tiny little, should be a little gap right there. All right. That's, yes, I, I see it. I have a little gap there. And not just that. I even have yet. a... Okay, where are you going to iron it? On the edge? The bottom so part? I'm gonna, gonna press. I'm actually gonna try I'm gonna roll these seams to the top. So they're nice, like and we're gonna press all the way around all right. from the inside. So I wanna get those seams to line up right at the top. Okay. It takes a little little just sort of work roll them around. A little tug. Okay, um, it should be perfectly like the edge of the in the liner and then the fabric for the outside. Like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As, as, as close as you can get it. Again, it doesn't right. have to be absolutely perfect. All right. And then how about the bottom one? We're not even going to worry about the bottom. Oh, okay. It's so just the top. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got it. Okay. So iron, turn on. Yeah. Again, careful with the iron. It is hot. Oh, they're burning themselves. They should have something that looks like that. cry <laughs> you want to cry why do you want to cry don't cry i was like wow i did it <laughs> oh tears of joy yeah <laughs> although you know i can obviously see where i made a mistake but that's fine that's right that's how you learn so now we need our ruler and our chalk again all right oh ecom live hi Hi, mommy guy. This is great. I just shared with my daughter. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, this is David. David showing us how to actually um, sew with the machine. Thank you so much, Ecom Pam. Ecom Live. Yes, I'm using Ecom. Show us. Surprise. Just to wait. Look at <laughs> David first. Almost done. All right. Yeah, so we have just done. three more things to sew. So from our, our little opening that we made, I'm just going to make a mark at the top of it and at the bottom. See, that should be, that should be our two centimeters, right? So I'm like, from the top of the stitch and then we'll mark two centimeters. Let me go to the Sorry, other side. David, from the end, two centimeters. From the top of that little opening that we made. All right. Oh, 
I ah, should line up a little bit. Now with the ruler and the chalk, we're going to draw a straight line from those connected. So is that where the cord is going to be? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around the inside of this and create a channel. So that do, is from do, where I um, remember I yeah, made so a hole. It so it's basically that hole, the end of, of both those holes, David. Yeah. So yeah. So you're going to mark from the top of your opening. It should be about it should be two centimeter opening there. So you're going to connect these, draw these lines, and then transfer that to the, the other side. You're going to do the same thing on both sides. Mm -hmm. Make sure those lines connect. Yeah. Maybe David, so the one it. from, I know it's from your channel. That's why I couldn't see the name. It's just probably she's coming from Ecamm. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. So just you said, um, I had all, straight I had all my channels, I had all my socials running on this uh, surface, and it kicked me off everything, and I haven't been able to go back on. <laughs> I don't okay, know what so happened. So I'll just basically make a line above and below that opening, David. Right. Is that right? That's exactly the goal. Okay. Um, I don't think I will be able to make this like perfectly straight, but I'll try the best I can. So from the top of that one is this one to here. Um, so all around, like David, I need to make like an all around mark. All the way around. Yep. Up to the other side. Yeah. So, so, so they line up on both sides. Okay. My Gosh. chalk is very faint, but can you see that? So it's like here and there. I don't know if I can make this straight. So we're done with our pins. Come on, come on, let me see, let me see. Come on, I can do this. From there to here, where is the opening? There's the opening. There. Ooh. You know, I like the sewing part. I don't like the measuring part. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like I love the sewing part, but not the measuring. Oh yeah, the numbers I I I, I get that. <laughs> right? It's like ugh. So, all right. So if this is this one, just as long as they're a straight line, then you know they kind of. And we're we're trying to basically encapsulate that opening, so we're gonna have to make a channel that the the string is gonna go into. All right. So you're gonna do we're gonna do one thing different with your machine now if you're ready. Okay, hold on, David. I'm just trying to make this okay. thing straight. Okay, now I need to do the same thing onto the other side. That's where the problem lies. Hold on. I think all my crafty sisters have given up at this point. <laughs> oh no! Guys, come on, you can do this! What? Figure out, Charlene, figure out your machine and watch it on the replay. Yes. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's really that machine issue. Okay, and then the other. Okay, this one. I'm also, this is my first. Uh stream to my twitch channel it's working oh you're yeah i saw it that you're um streaming it also to your twitch 
So I know Twitch is mostly for gamers, but you know, maybe it's an untapped space. Who knows? <laughs> Oh no! Actually, I was able to watch one time this girl uh, on Twitch. She was actually sewing. Okay. Yeah. So they said if you are gonna be streaming for a long time, Twitch is a better option for some. Yeah. All right, I'm done finally, David. Okay. So what to do next? All right. So we're gonna go to our machine again, and okay. like like with. Your machine should have this uh, removable plate. We're gonna take that out of the way. We're just gonna use this part of the arm. We actually, call oh, this okay. a free I arm. That? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm gonna remove it. Okay. Oh, the, it we're gonna actually throw... has a purpose. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we're gonna flip that over oh. like that. So the first, the first stitch we're gonna do is just the top stitch. All right. So using the the edge of our presser foot as a guide. Okay. Where did you start from the opening? I start start at the start at this just just after the seam. Okay, just after. Okay. Where is it? Okay, just after this. And it looks like I have one viewer on on Twitch. It might be me, but <laughs> Wow, hi. All right. Okay, David. It's All just right, so a regular gonna... running stitch, right? Yeah, so give it a little, sort of roll it underneath there so it's like right up against this. So you have more of the fabric in front of you. Yes, just I, gently... I can feel it, yes. And we're just gonna stitch. And just kind of roll it around. Okay. Lock can, it again, know, right? You need to lock it a bit. Uh, we really don't because we're gonna we're gonna connect it all the way around at the other end. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because this, this is more of a this, we'll we'll lock it in when we get to the other other side. So do you hear the difference between my machine and David's? Mine is going at like super slow speed. <laughs> ah, well, take your time. Now, when you get to the the side seams again. Yes, what, what do I do when I reach that part? Yeah. Come up to it as much as you can. Some, sometimes the machine might just grab it and go right through. It might it might need a little bit of a tug, but you don't want to force it. Okay. Yeah. And then I lock it from there after? Yes, yeah, so we're going to go all the way around. But when I was saying we got to the side seam right here, this is the other side of it. Uh -huh. It's a little thicker because there's so many layers of fabric uh -huh. bunched up. You just want to make sure that you don't jam your needle on that because that sometimes can cause a... Uh, bird's nesting and looping. Oh no, so. okay. I'll just go slow when I reach that part. So now here I am at the final scene again. Work my way through it. Now, I wanna, now that I've lined up both seams, if I just stitch over it a little bit, then you want to back, back stitch it and then that'll lock it in place. Okay. Whoop. <laughs> okay, what happened here? Come on, come on, we can do this. It's bunching up, it's bunching up, no. no. Lift it lift your foot up and put it back down again because maybe the fabric's being pushed over. So okay, you okay. wanna let it um, relax a little bit. Cleaning up some of these little tiny threads that are sticking out. Somewhere I have smaller snips, but I don't know where I left those. <laughs> Woohoo! Guys, I can't believe this. I'm almost there. <laughs> okay, 
what happens when I right. get there? I like lock it, right? Yep. So you're gonna back over that, and then trim those threads. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna do that same thing to the both of those lines that we marked on our bag. So now we're gonna do the second line. Yep. So okay. start from the seam again. Okay. Here's my. I like to start just just in front of the seam because it's a good that's a good practice because if you're working with thicker fabrics, especially things like denim, uh -huh. what will happen if you start in front of the seam, the foot will stick up like this and it'll get stuck. So if you start in front of the seam, the presser foot's already like in front of it. So when you get to that seam, there's a couple of tricks like li just lift your foot up and kind of you can put something underneath it. There's like a even like just sticking a, a button or something under there to hold that back of that foot up over that big seam. In this case, it's not that big of a deal because this is pretty flat. So that's something to keep in mind for other projects. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do my first line. So you start again from where we actually started start a while back. Side seam. So just, just in front of the side seam. Oh, just in front. Okay. Yeah. So just like the one we did a while ago, right? Just in front. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm using a uh, you know the dark thread so you can you can really see what I'm doing. If I was worried about like this is a dark blue, so it should it goes with it all right. But if you know if I wanted to, I, I would have used either a white thread or even maybe a, a yellow or a pink, make it a little more decorative. But I just wanted to be able to see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming up on that second side seam. You see, it's starting to bunch up a little bit, like you were saying. Just lift up the foot. Are you excited to see if I made it? <laughs> Obviously, David is almost done. Yeah, we're almost there. This is like... Is there anything on Facebook? So you don't hear me doing anything better, right? Because I'm going to remedy my boo-boo, <laughs> which I made a while ago back. You're done, David. I got one more stitch to do, but I'm waiting for you. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna okay finish that one first before I remedy my boo boo. Okay, so that you don't need to wait. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I'm doing so the, did, the next top step. part of our cord channel, and then I have one more down here. I'm gonna do this, and this makes just a, a you know pocket to hold oh, our that's string. Oh, so nice. We're even going to have a pocket. Well, it's not really a pocket. I would say that's a pocket for the string. You know, that's what, that's what the string will, will ride through. It's like a channel for the string. Wow. You've thought of everything. I never even thought that, you know, to even think of keeping po the... Pockets are another a lesson. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I can barely see the... Yeah, my chalk the line is. I made anyway. This washes yeah. off, right, David? Yeah, little, little. That's mine's already fallen off, so. All right.
All right. Yeah. Almost there. Oops. Almost to the finish line. Okay. Wow. Can't wait to see what you're doing. <laughs> Tina, how are you? Charlene. Okay, my crafty sisters. Show us. Hello, Poker. There you go. Show it, show it. Or are you guys adding a zipper? No, we're not. No way. I went back to earlier so I can follow after ripping. Okay, yes, Tina, that's great. That's great. Thank you, David, for the very informative session. I will follow later on my replay when I can get another needle. All right, and maybe I have a needle, great. sis Charles. I can probably give you one. All right, David, I'm done. All right, so our next thing we're going to do here is have my string. Um, I'm using power cord. It's because what I had, but you can use a... You could even use like a shoelace or you know drawstring material. You know, even a piece of uh, ribbon will work for this. Okay. Uh, yeah. And we switch. All right. Uh, so how do we do it? Okay, David. Okay. Can show yeah. us. That's All right. right. So All right. Get a cord. So so don't cord. worry. No complicated measurements here. We're just Yay, gonna eyeball Finally. It. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a piece of the string and I'm just gonna double it over kind of eyeball it to so it's just outside of okay the bag so the pouch go. let's see how long so like a, just a, a, a like an inch or a couple of centimeters sticking out okay. so i'm just uh, i guess i'm just sort of eyeballing that okay okay i'm, I'm done and that. And then I'm just going to use that same piece as a measurement against my string. Let's go in the end. And then I cut it? Yep. Okay. So you have, you're going to end up with two strings. How many? Two. Two. So you just... Um... Can I see? Yeah, so, I have, so I have two strings. Uh... Okay, so I need two of that length. Yeah, two, two of the same length, as long as they kind of are a little bit wider than the, the bag when you fold it over. So it'll be like doubled over. They're going to stick out Okay. like that. Because what we're going to do is wrap them around so it's double, so there's it's double cinched. Okay. So... I'm going to move my sewing machine out of the way now because we are done with the sewing. How do I pull this thing? in I am covered with thread <laughs> oh yeah me too <laughs> covered Lala covered <laughs> with thread oh where is it yeah that happens <laughs> okay so how do we put the string in now all right Excellent question. There, uh, best way if you have, if you have a safety pin. Oh, safety. I forgot to mention a safety pin in my uh, supply list. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, okay, safety pin. I think I, I must have one. Okay, I'll probably. Yeah. Hold on. Get one from the bathroom. Come on. I'm going to tie little knots in the ends of my strings because paracord okay. tends to okay, fray. Okay, I got it. I found one. Great. All right, so I'm making little knots at the very ends of my strings because this, this paracord tends to fray and uh, pull apart when you're trying to string it. But uh, I don't have a lighter, but you can actually melt the ends of this. It'll fuse it together. So I'm going to just take my safety pin. Where's the other part? Where's the other one? 
There you go. Just gonna run it through that knot. And now we're gonna find on our first opening. You see that? And we're just gonna slip that in there. It goes right in. And then just bunch it along. Okay. Got it. So just walking it through. And we're gonna go all the way around. So we're gonna go past our first our other side seam. Kind of you might get caught on the fabric in the inside of the seam, but you kind of have to feel your way through it. Yeah. I feel it. I'm like halfway yeah. through the first side. Yeah. I think we might have a problem with the with the seam, right? That's where yeah, it it's might gonna, get tangled. Yeah, it's just going to on the inside of the seam, so you got to kind of pull it open a little bit and push it. You just got to work it through till you feel. <laughs> come on, come on. Please don't get stuck there. Come on, come on. You can do this. Yes. Got past the first one. I'm having oh, trouble. Oh, no, no. This get... is the opening already. Do I go? Do I exit so already? All the way Not yet. The, the same... You want to go to the same end that you put it in. Oh. Yeah. Because we're going to loop it all the way through. And then we're going to do the... From the other end, we're going to do the same thing with the other string. So they crisscross. Ah, uh, okay. Got all it. Right. Got that it. being very frustrating. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it got stuck. Come on, move. Oh, there we go. Please move. Please move. Yeah, I can't get mine through for some reason. <laughs> First one I made, I had the, you know, this is our, uh, the one that I made as a, this one worked just fine. I had no issue getting the string through it at all. So, okay, this fabric's so a one, little... one string done. Yep. That came okay. out. One string that through. Okay. That's now true. just the other one. Yeah. So you're going to go from the, the opposite. And now this the one, I got to go from the other end. Yep. And go all the way around with the other string. Oh, no. This one's freeing. No, no, no. It's untangling. Yeah. I got to. Okay. Make a knot. Make a knot. Yep. I am stuck. <laughs> come on, make a knot. Come on, right, come on, come on, knot. Okay, there you go. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, one it. down. Okay, and then this time around, I put the other end coming from the other end. Right. Do I make sense? I don't think I made sense. Anyway, you got what I mean. Made sense to me. All right. <laughs> Thank you, David. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, got that one in. All right, so let's enter through this one. Oh, this is how you do out. this one. Except for, you know, I think I did this quite well, except for the one where I remember I said I made a boo boo. Yep. I'm supposed, you're, we're supposed to make a corner, right? We're supposed to, supposed to make four corners. Yeah. And then I was trying to do a shortcut so that, you know, the, all the four corners will be aligned like that. I don't need to measure. And then the thing is, I aligned them wrong so that the oh, seam no. of the other fabric <laughs> ah. was actually the one there. So I cut that part a little bit. So, yep. you will see that there is a part here. So, I'm going to knot the ends of my first string together just to keep them. Oh gosh, why did I open it? Yep. Why did I do that? And it's made a little knot there. No, 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 no. Pull it back. Pull so, it back. I didn't go back in by accident. And I'm going to do the other side. This is almost it. We're almost done. Hold on. <laughs> Ow. I missed the opening. Where's the opening? It... Okay. 
Where? Okay, there you go. Come on, come on, come on. It should actually be easier to do the second string because the the first string can get it behind. It's already. Actually, it I had a difficulty not... with. <laughs> I had more difficulty with the second one though. Okay, now where is my needle? Okay, there it is. Almost done. Almost done. Oh, we got this three hours. Past I made it past the seam. Um, where where I cut it is where I had a difficulty putting it in because of that hole. Yeah, I'm having the same problem now. There it goes, I think. We're, David and I are gonna finish almost at the same time, guys. So how are you guys? Good night. Oh, hello there. Um, Saxopia TV. Hello, hello. Thanks for dropping by. Okay, go out, go out from this one. Okay, there you go. Got it, got it, got it. Hold on. Ah, okay. All right. Come on, come out. All right. Got it. I'm almost, I almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> got both cords out. All right. <laughs> Guys, I did it. Okay, so who said I wasn't right. going to be able to do it? Did somebody I never it? doubted you for a minute. Oh, thank you, David. Now I just need to sew this thing up before I show you guys what I did. Oops. All right. So now I've got both ends knotted so they don't fall back in. And then you can just give a little tug. And there's your drawstring pouch. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, one cord got out. Ah! Yeah, you want to tie the, end, the other ends together so they look like that. That way they don't fall back in. Yeah, I almost, almost done. And I'll probably take this outside and, and burn the ends so these are nice and permanent. Wow, what happened? So which part is this one? Which is this one? I'd love to see what you're doing. Don't be bashful. Oh, I'm all, oh, <laughs> you're done, you're done. I'm done, Sorry. done, yep. Okay, I will just try to, because one one of them, one of the cords, accidentally got removed. Uh, you have to probably best to just pull it out and re restring it. Oh no! Well, anyways, just for show. Okay, so let's show it. Okay, let me see. Overhead, overhead. So we'll probably. 
do this. All right. So I'm not it, Tina. <laughs> yeah, but instead of Tina, we're gonna make it David. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Just need to change that to David. Okay. All right, hold on. It's a David W. Ryan. There you go. And uh, okay, let's make this pulling around. There you go. All right. Okay, but that's Tina's uh, overhead cam. Hold on, let's put. Well. Am all right. Okay, so David, this is mine. So everybody. And this is the pouch inside. Nice. Oh, it you worked. see the threads. <laughs> Sorry. Let's remove the threads. Okay, there's a little bit of mess, but you know. So that's my pouch. And if nice. I pull the string. There you go. All right. How's that? Ta -da! All right, Tina. Tina, how about you, Tina? Tina had to do a restitch. There, David. Okay, I want to show you the blooper. Okay, sure. David. Okay, guys, this is what I made a mistake in. Very huge mistake. All right. So remember, um, we were supposed to put like a corners, right, David? Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, instead of, you know, uh, the edges, I placed the one with the seam. So I accidentally was going to put a square on that one, right? Ah. Yeah. All right. So you see the gap there? So my great plan is to actually darn this together. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. So that's my great plan, right? So that is where I made a big boo-boo. Okay. But then, you know, I said instead of starting all over again, I'll just continue on and just remedy that. All right. So, and then there's the cord. And then, ta -da! But actually, right. if you close it, it's actually pretty. Okay. That... Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> and then inside, it's actually pretty nice. The inside is actually pretty nice. There you go. Yeah. So thank you, David. Okay, we got oh, to see David. This was fun. All right. Let's see David's final pouch. So All right. There you go. Awesome. Okay. So my I, strings I, I, are this... actually my strings are pretty long, David. Like they're so yeah. long. When, when they're cinched, they're gonna be about as that's I just need to cut them. It it's be better about. long than short, right? Yeah, when you open yeah. it, it should be... So I'll just uh, make do with, you know, something for that one. All right, yeah. so let's do the comments, David. All right, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, oh, we did that. And then kudos, Batchmate. Thank you so much, Batchmate Marie. Morning news, that black one drawstring pouch. I like. Oh, thank you, Dockery. You're still here. Congratulations. Thank you, David. You did it. Hooray. Thank you for sharing this drawstring pouch project. Yes, definitely. Let's do it again. All right. So finish product now. Wow, congrats. I'm still behind. It's okay, Tina. Okay. Nice. How Sorry. long a string should it be? Oh, how long? Maybe, David, you would you could, can you like demonstrate again how to determine how long the string? Uh, because Tina, I think, is in that part already. Margaret Ryan yeah, says, so nice. Thank you so much, Margaret. David is a good teacher, that's my right? Big sister. Hold on. David, I'll make you go. Oh, there you go. She's asking how long should the string be, David? Again, how um, did you I do it? I think we made them. Here, let me switch. I keep forgetting where, where I put my overhead. There it is. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, so basically, I just, I just measured. Um, 
I laid it out and just took a string, I just eyeballed it really, just folded it over so it's it just sticks out maybe uh, like three inches beyond the edge of the bag mm -hmm. when it's folded over. So you end up with a, you know something about that long because it's got to go all the way around. All right, so and about you, three you inches. Leave a little room for knotting it and, and then just make two of those the same length and that's really it. All right, so just about three inches uh, beyond the actual Length. Yeah, I was just eyeballing it. So just enough, enough so depending on what string you're using, mm -hmm. you know, if it's like a like a sweatshirt drawstring, you might make it a little bit longer because the knot's going to be bigger, you know. But I just eyeballed it. Okay. So. Amazing how this one is supposedly a very easy project. <laughs> Guys, hey, you I, did it! <laughs> I was like, I'm super proud. This is going to be like. Super highlight, first time, right? Drawstring with a liner inside, right? Yeah. <laughs> so super nice, right? Yes, yes. Nice. Everybody saying nice. Hanilin, Aiden. Hello, thank you. Adan, hello, thank you. Po. Woohoo. Okay, got it. Hi, Ati Margie from Mitch. Yes, thank you, Mitch, for dropping by Ati Margie's stream last night. All right, David, let's talk about more about spooling around before we say bye-bye. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm just getting the channel started. Uh, I have a, a website. It's going to be spooling around, spooling around dot live. Mm -hmm. I just have a, I just started building the website. All right. I'm open to build a community, uh, share ideas, just have fun with it. It's not, this is not a serious, uh, you know, I'm not making suits or anything well, i might mm -hmm. make a suit but i'm saying i'm not i'm not doing this like it's it's, it's for fun you know yes. so i want to i want to share the fun side of doing this where i'm going to do a lot of different projects uh yes. it's not limited so we're to going to be clothing. looking forward to that all right yeah so, yes because so. fabric is everywhere and it's fun you know like it's good to know simple things you know like how to repair something because uh oh yeah you know, that would be great that, if you, take, you know that would be great, keep, David, right? If you would keep teach something out of the landfill, to, you know, you can yes, use it again. How to mend things, right? Probably for future, you know, um, projects. Yep. Absolutely. Upcycling. So, there's a whole bunch of things. There's so many different directions you can go with this because it's, you know. Exactly. I'm so, Tina, uh, my dear Tina friend, can you please put down the link to uh, David's channel again? All right. So, guys. If you again, David has just started his channel. He's been sewing for a long time, but he's just starting his channel. So if you guys can, you know, give him that push to actually continue on with this hobby of his, which uh, really gives him joy apart from, you know, his other craft. He's actually into a lot of, you know, crafty ideas and uh, things as well. Okay, so if you want to see what, else he has done he not just on do you already have a huge uh, a facebook for spooling around done yeah. I'm, i gotta build that too that's the next All thing right. i'm working so on i'll look be building forward it. to that but i've seen some of david's projects he actually did like you know um the what do you call those uh the cushions on your oh, patio, uh, patio cushions yeah yes yes in your veranda or your uh, den or deck it was super yeah, yeah. nice, guys. So, he, David can do a lot of things. Uh, the only thing he doesn't have right now is time, right? But, you know, if yeah. you probably, you know, um, push him a little bit, you know, give him that, you know, push to actually continue on creating content if and when he has the time. Again, David, thank you so much for having the, spending this whole morning, okay, with us. Your whole half day of your oh. Saturday is gone. Thank you so, so much. In behalf of welcome. the crafting community here at Mommy Guide Inc., we thank you so, so much. And I hope that this is not the first and last. All right. So we hope you can oh, yeah, come we're, back. We're going to do for, this again. All right. For more. All right. Thank you again. So Tina is saying, all right, guys, uh, check out David's channel there in the chat. So I hope that, you know, as a thank you to him, you can go there right now and subscribe. I know there's just two videos just there right now because he just started, right? So just yep. like we do here in our community where we help each other out, I hope that, you know, David also, you help David start his own uh, Spooling Around channel, all right? So with that, thank you so much, David!
And we'll You're see you soon, welcome. guys. Thank you. Have a blessed week. And don't forget to uh, join me tomorrow on my Amazon Live. All right. So with that, thank you, David. Have a blessed week, everyone. Bye. Thank you so, so much again for joining us. I hope that you had a great time. For my dear crafty sisters, hindi ko na kayo na ipasa because oh, we didn't have any more time. But thank you so much for being in the background. And I'll see you all guys tomorrow. Bye!